Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Shett, episode 463, featuring a long overdue look at the Champions of Kryn game from 1990, with a story by Jim Ward, uh, Victor Penman, and Dave Shelley. Uh, now this game is a gold box, it's the first of a gold box spin-off series, basically. Uh, the gold box games got started with Pool of Radiance in 88, uh, but of course that game was set in the Forgotten Realm setting, whereas these, uh, the Kryn series, are set in Kryn, uh, following the Dragonlance Legends and the Dragonlance Chronicles novels uh, for Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, uh, two of my favorite authors of all time. Uh, but what really made, made me want to go back and look at the Gold Box games again is the Gold Box Companion app. Uh, now this is a free app you can download and install along with your good old games installations of these uh, series, and it adds an auto mapper and a bunch of other quality of life uh, tools that I think really uh, put the gold back into the gold box series, if you will. Uh, but you can judge by yourself, uh, judge for yourself by watching this video and see if it's, uh, if you're like me, if it makes you want to dive back into the gold box world. <laughs> Not that I needed all that much encouragement, but man, that this uh, companion app, as you'll see, uh, really is something special. Uh, anyway, we've got a lot to cover here. So without further ado, here is Champions of Kryn. All right, folks, welcome back. And, man, we got a lot of great stuff here to get to, so I'm going to try to keep the, this hit show short. But, <laughs> you know, I'm just so, I'm so excited about this game and, and the stuff in this video. I'm, I'm having a hard time containing myself. <laughs> uh, but I'll try my best. Uh, so what, am I, what the hell am I smoking here? Uh, we are going to be looking at a game called Dungeons & Dragons Kryn uh, Series, as it's listed on GOG, goodoldgames.com. Uh, so the first step would be to go pick this up and it's $9.99, you know, six 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 upside down. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that, but <laughs> uh, you get the three games, uh, Champions of Kryn, Death Knights of Kryn, and the Dark Queen of Kryn. And, of course, these are the DOS versions, uh, but since it's from good old games, you know, they set everything up for you, so you just click a button. It's just as easy as installing something on Steam, and uh, you're good to go. And if you've played those gold box games, most people probably start with uh, Pool of Radiance, Secret of the Silver Blades, uh, Curse of the Azure Bonds. You know, some people play the Buck Rogers games, but uh, the Forgotten Realms ones are probably the most popular. Uh, however, to, for my money, these Kryn ones are just as good, if not better, uh, in many ways. There's some improvements we'll get into. Uh, but anyway, this is exciting enough. It's, it's available for $9.99. But what really takes this to the next level and makes it worth looking at again today, you know, not just for nostalgic people, but like maybe you've never played a gold box game. Uh, maybe you tried to play it and you're like, man, this is just too cumbersome, it's too uh, retro for me, it's too uh, too hardcore, you know, I'm kind of lost here and i got to be making my own maps, <laughs> uh, whatever. Well, the answer is here, and this is what I'll be using today in this video, the gold box companion. And man, this just makes all the difference in the world. It's just like a brand new game. I mean, to me, to me this is like, you remember when you started to hear about uh, Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale and, they, and Beam Dog was doing like those enhanced editions, right? And you got so excited. You're like, oh man, this is going to be so great. <laughs> you know, and they made all these promises and, you know, it didn't... You know, I'm not going to say the products were, were bad or anything, but it just didn't, for, for me anyway, it didn't really feel like that much of an enhancement over the original. Uh, this does. You know, this <laughs> this makes it feel like, wow. <laughs> you know, this this is, a, it changes the, the gameplay, uh, the experience of playing the game. The quality of life goes up so much. Uh, it feels like new game. I mean, it's fresh again, right? It makes, <laughs> it makes the gold box gold again, if you will. Uh, just utterly fantastic, and I'll show you this. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. But uh, you know, this is free. However, he and I'm not really sure who this person is. Zorbus.net, whoever the hell that is. You know, by the way, folks, if you're doing work like this, put your damn name on it. I, I don't know what the. You know, I shouldn't have to be looking around to find out who you are. Uh, but anyway, 
This is free, and you can donate some money. Let's see where that goes. I guess to pay PayPal One Touch to <laughs> Zorbus, the mysterious Zorbus. <laughs> That's kind of a you know. I'm really. Oh, let me accidentally close my tab. But you know, especially if you're asking people for money, folks. You know, don't be sounding like you're some kind of mysterious <laughs> wizard or something. Uh, but anyway, I'll overlook it this time because it's just such a fantastic product. And you can donate. And I would suggest, you know, the game is $9.99. Uh, why not throw uh, $9.99 to uh, Zorbus uh, for making this fantastic mod? And, and we could get into this, some of the other stuff that we won't get into in this video. But it makes it... Um, if you play this with Pool of Radiance, it makes it so that you can play with a uh, Paladin. Somewhere here it talks about that. Let me just do a quick search so I don't give you the wrong info. Oh yeah, so it puts that fixed command into Pool of Radiance, and that that's a huge thing. <laughs> makes it a lot easier to heal up after a, a battle. It also yeah lets you play as a Paladin or Ranger in Pool of Radiance. And then you can even export those into Curse of the Azure Bonds. So the original pool was very uh, limited. You know, you only had a few classes, basically, but then they added some classes in those later games. But the problem was, with, with these games, you start with pool, then you want to take those characters, bring them into Curse, bring them into Secret of the Silver Blades, and you're kind of stuck with the, you know, what you could create in pool. No longer the case, right here, thanks to Zorbus. <laughs> uh, you know, some of this stuff is you know, uh, bordering on cheesing the mechanics, like the editors and stuff, so we're not going to do that. Uh, but we'll definitely be taking advantage of this. And then a one last piece of this that is just absolutely essential. And I don't care, even if you don't play this game, uh, you know, whatever, you gotta read Dragonlance the novels. Not just in, there's, a, you know, probably a hundred of them, but there's only a few that are just really, really classic, you know, gotta read material. And this one is the one that I read. I picked this up, I, I want to say it was like a Walden bookstore, when I was uh, probably like 16, seemed like I was in a freshman in high school, so it must have been like 14 or 15, came across this you know big, thick brick of a book, Dragonlance Chronicles, and I just picked this up kind of on a whim. And man, I just, got, I don't think I've ever gotten into novels the way <laughs> I did this. I mean, it was just incredible. I mean, I was sharing it with all my friends that were you know, cool, uh, remotely cool enough to appreciate this. I let them read it. And finally, my poor old copy of Chronicles just got to where it was, <laughs> you know, falling apart. So I'm really excited to see this back in paperback. 35 bucks. you know, obviously I'm going to be ordering this. Uh, but you can also get, like, smaller, you know, like the regular size paperbacks. You know, I wish they had it in hardcover. You know, I would totally like to own this in hardcover. But you need to read these, not just because they're absolutely fantastic novels, just in and of themselves. I mean, they're right up there. To, to me, uh, these are like my regular, you know, perennial reading. You know, I, I read the, every now and then I'll read the Tolkien series all the way through. You know, you read books like 1984, occasionally Dune. I'm just looking down here. Dune, yeah, that's another one. <laughs> Don't read the whole series on that, but the first one. Uh, but for Dragonlance, you want to read all three of these, and you can pick up this collection here. And, and I would say before you play the game even, if somehow you haven't read this, just stop the vid order this, stop the video, read it. You'll really thank me for that. Um, and then there's a follow-up series. It's not quite as good. Well, some people like it uh, more, I guess. There's, there's always somebody like that. Uh, to me, Chronicles are really the, uh, the huge one. But then you've got Dragonlance Legends, and it does follow some of the characters from that Chronicle series, and it's, it's a good series. I mean, you'll read it. <laughs> it's enjoyable. It's, it's got some uh, fun moments in this, too. Unfortunately, there's no... Uh, well, it says there's a three-market set. I don't know what... I haven't seen this paperback before. It looks Oh, it's a box set. Uh, yeah, so you get... I, I think it's three different books, though. I'm pretty sure this is three different... Yeah, like it looks something like that, maybe. Uh, but anyway, I have all of these box sets, and really just... Utterly great, but what's even the reason I'm bringing them up so much? <laughs> I could talk about them all day, <laughs> uh, but you kind of want to read those so you know what's going on in these Kryn games because otherwise, you know, they just kind of throw you in, you get a little bit of material in the journal, you know, about what's going on. But man, you, you really love it a whole lot more uh, if you read those books. I think it's more important, 
you don't really have to read any Forgotten Realms novels to, to play Pool of Radiance, for example. It's kind of a generic uh, fantasy. As much as I love it, you know, I'd say it's kind of a generic fantasy setting. Uh, whereas Kren, there's some there's some special things about it. You know, they do some unusual things. There's some backstory that's important. Uh, so I think to really get the full impact, you want to you want to read the novels first. Uh, all six of those, and then come back in and play the book. <laughs> play the book? <laughs> play the game. <laughs> uh, so hopefully i making sense there. But anyway, enough of the setup. Let's get into the game. Alright, so here we go. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons computer product. 1990. Symbolism there. If you've read those novels I just talked about, Champions of Kryn. Lovely artwork. I mean, you can see how you know if you go back and look at Pool. I mean, that art or artwork was pretty good, but I think they stepped it up a notch <laughs> uh, by 1990. They had two years to work on it, right? And this music is by John Halbleib or Halbleib. See down there at the uh, corner. Not quite sure how to pronounce his name, but lovely little score. It's about the only music you're going to hear in the game. <laughs> they cut it off. <laughs> um, but I like to create a party. Now you can load a save game and it has a default party that comes with the game. You can roll with that if you like. But I mean, come on, who wants to do that? Like half the fun is uh, creating your own. I mean, you're going to if you play through this whole Crin series, you're going to be with these guys for a long time. <laughs> you probably want to you know, be a little bit creative in your party. And now it is um, one of those games where it's not so punishing that you can't make a bad party, quote unquote. I mean, you could pretty much do anything. Uh, matter of fact, you could even just have like two or three characters, I think, and still complete the series with just, you know, a couple of characters. So it's kind of hard to make such horrible decisions <laughs> uh, that you just can't finish the game. But, but that said, uh, there are certainly some characters, combinations of classes and races that are better than others and uh, unfortunately the only way to really get a handle on it is uh is to look at the journal uh i don't know why i said that was unfortunate but <laughs> actually if you have the companion up you can look at the journal that way uh but you can see here that's there's it's mostly the standard uh you know, if you played Pool of Radiance, pretty much any fantasy game, you know, the, the, the sort of standard tropes are here. Uh, but there are a few special things unique to Kryn, uh, unique to this series, like Clerics of Rorks. The dwarves have this cool god called Rorks. <laughs> For example, there's hill dwarves and mountain dwarves. And, you know, I think some of this is fairly standard. You know, there's just the same sort of idea called something different. But one of the cool things that's definitely different about Kryn, and I think one of the best uh, differences is that something called the Kinder. And these are basically like the hobbits. I guess it's kind of based on like a hobbit halfling, you know, in terms of stature, but there's a few cool things about them. Uh, they're a little bit like gnomes in that they're really curious. Uh, they, if you, let's see, they're resistant to magic and poison. They have a, I don't know if it mentions it here, but they have a unique weapon. Called, yeah, called the hoop pack. It's kind of this staff sling-like thing that's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> and they can do a taunt and focus uh, attacks, especially spell attacks, dragon breath, that sort of thing, just on them. And they have a you know, good accuracy, which that's going to be huge in this game. Oh my god, you're just missing constantly. Uh, so the kinder might actually end up getting most of your kill shots with this hoop pack weapon of his. Um, Let's see what else. Is there anything else there? The uh, rest of this is pretty standard stuff. One of the classes is unique to this series. That is the knight. Yeah, the Salomnic Knights. And there's a big history. It's a big part of the novels again. This idea of the code and the measure. And there's a wonderful character named Sturm. <laughs> uh, that's a Salomnic Knight uh, in the books. And you can read, you know, very concerned about honor. And they have these nice mustaches. They're always talking about him stroking his mustaches. <laughs> I guess he has two or three mustaches. I mean, what does that even mean? I, like, this is a mustache. <laughs> can, can, can I have, like, multiple mustaches? I, I don't even know what that means. Uh, but anyway, they have some, uh, they're very powerful characters. They come with plate mail. <laughs> 
absolutely huge advantage. Just if that was the only thing that might be worth having. Uh, but they also have some other cool perks. You know, if you get higher up, it's, it's a prestige class. Like in Bardstone, how you start off as a magician, you can maybe become a wizard and a sorcerer and so on. Eventually an arc mage. Or, uh, I forget what are they call those arc mages. Uh, anyway, in this series, you start off as a knight of the crown, I think, and then you can upgrade to sword and rose later on, and you get some uh, clerical spells. And they're just, uh, they're all around really powerful characters, and you, ne you need to have at least one to be able to do some of the quests. I don't know if it's you have to have it to complete the game or not, but you definitely, there's some parts of the game you won't be able to do if you don't have a knight. So you definitely want at least one, and I think they either can be human or half-elf. So I don't think you can have like a dwarven knight. But you can have a female knights. No, that's no problem in this game. Uh, let's see, mages, thieves, multi-class characters. Yes, and you we're definitely want to be multi-classing. I'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, however, if you scroll down to the, uh, let's see, I don't know if it's in this one or not. E yes, here we go. Uh, so this is one of the sticking points of the series, and they were doing some of this in the Pool of Radiance. I mean, this is AD&D ultimately, I suppose, but you'll notice uh, there's certain races. If you pick a race, you won't be able to get, you'll only be able to get to certain uh, stat cap, and then there'll be a level cap on some of the classes and males and females are slightly different like in this series if you look here like the female human can only have a she can have an 18 strength but only a 50 percent uh, on a percentile die so basically if you roll 18 i guess you get to roll another die called a percentile die and get a little bit even get a little bit stronger now there is an error here in the manual it says eight i think they mean 18 uh, so just ignore that. But some of these are, like a female elf can only have a strength of 16 total. So that probably means you don't want to pick that combination for a fighter. Unless you're comfortable with that idea of, you know, being, um, you know, not quite as strong. I mean, it's just it's just a hard limit baked into the, uh, the math here. Uh, they can, however, have up to a 19 dexterity. So I guess I feel like that kind of compensates for it. But they're just, you know, a lot of these kind of come across more as limitations. You know, the perks, they have perks too, but they don't quite balance out those negatives. You know, if you look here at the knight, so the knight, human and half-elf only. The mages don't really have any limitations. The fighters, though, you know, somewhere here it talks about kinder. Yeah, so if you look at a, like a ranger, if you wanted a kinder ranger, they can only go to level 5. And, you know, this is... Again, some of this stuff won't even matter in this game. You won't even get that high of a level by the time you're done. Uh, but if you want to carry these characters on into some of the later games, you know, it might be something to be thinking about. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm trying to remember last time I played this, I, I wanted to say I just had all humans. <laughs> just, I got sort of freaked out about these limitations and didn't want to have a, to deal with the, uh, you know, those negatives. But I'm not going to be doing that this time. Uh, anyway, it's just something to uh, to think about as we're putting a party together. Uh, okay, let's start off, and I want a... Uh, I like to start off with my sort of tank character, and I think we'll do a Salamnic Knight, actually, to start off with. So we'll do Human, and I like the idea of a female knight. <laughs> you know, it's something you don't see in the books that I can remember. I guess there's a... You know, I don't... There must have been. I'm kind of hazy on that detail. But we'll do it for our little game play session here. Lawful good, of course. Uh, by the way, all the characters have to be good or neutral, I think. You can't have a uh, evil characters, which I never play evil anyway. So <laughs> not a problem for me. And we really want to be, when we're rolling for uh, knights, it says you want a good wisdom score and a good strength score. But I would also add a, uh, a good uh, constitution, because that determines how many hit points you have and... <laughs> You, you really don't want to go into this game with uh, severely limited hit points. And the strength that... It does say in the manual that the strength determines your ability to hit with a melee weapon, which again is a huge thing. So we probably want to roll, keep rolling until we get at least... Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have an 18 wisdom and strength and con. Charisma's not really important. You know, if you had to sacrifice one, make it a... 
I guess, intelligence or uh, charisma. Let's see, 14 is a little low. Yeah, so you could, you could keep rolling for a while. Or you could do like I do sometimes and just say, well, no matter what it is, I will just go with that. <laughs> but look at this. I think this is a pretty decent roll. 18 strength, 18 int. You know, I, I would love to be able to swap that 18 int score <laughs> uh, for wisdom and con or dex. The dex is a little bit low. You can see how that affects the, the armor class will be 9 here. Thacko is your ability to hit. So you want armor class and Thacko to be as low as possible. Uh, you can make the armor class, you can adjust these somewhat with better weapons, better armor, better equipment, but you know, it's, it's nice to have a starting advantage with your stats. But I'm going to go with this. This looks, looks pretty good to me. And we'll call her Sarah. And once again, I'm going to, I actually went to the poll that I did for the game you'd like to see me do. <laughs> so the people that responded to that poll, I randomly picked some names from that. And that's what I'm using. This is just, uh, we can change up a little bit of what the character looks like. You know, put a different hat on. Uh, this, some of these look kind of strange to me. I guess that one's okay. The main thing with this is you just don't want to have uh, your characters all looking alike. You want them to change them up by color so you can tell them apart, basically. <laughs> As you can see, the, the detail there is not really all that amazing. Now you can go back and change this later, so it's not that it's not a deal breaker. And some people that are really into it, uh, what they like to do is, um, you know, when you get a new weapon, if you go to an axe, to a sword, or to a mace, you know, you can actually get in there and change the icon to reflect that. Now it does not have those portraits like uh, Pool of Radiance had with those head and bodies. <laughs> you can do the fun thing with the, you know, the sort of grisly looking guy in the chainmail bikini. It's everybody's favorite. Uh, they don't have that here, but it's okay. All right, so we got our knight as our tank. That'll be good because they come in plate armor. So now we can make another uh, fighting class. And, you know, there's some debate about what that should be. Uh, I was just looking at, you know, if you just look at the manual in the journal, it sure seems like a ranger would be the ideal choice because then you get some uh, special abilities, and they seem to be about as good as a fighter anyway. I guess maybe the... I, I didn't see any particular reason to go with a pure fighter. You know, I didn't see anything they can do that a ranger can't do. <laughs> so I'm a little bit... not 100% sure how I feel about that. Uh, most people like to multi-class the hell out of their characters. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe go with a dwarf for our next character here. And you can see we have these... Since it's a, the humans have to be single class. The uh, and I don't think you can swap classes like you could in pool uh, with those either. So you really are stuck with, with the one. Uh, here you get a little bit more options. So I'm thinking I'm going to try this ranger. It's I haven't tried a ranger before, so I'm, I'm kind of curious about it. I kind of like the idea of a dwarf ranger. <laughs> It'll make him lawful good. Now there is a big I made a big mistake last time I played this, and I had two wizards in the party. And I made them both lawful good. And that really hurt me. Uh, you don't want to do that. I'll, I'll explain when we get to that part. But I don't think it really matters for your other characters. Okay, and once again, you want to have... Uh, yeah, really good wisdom. Let's see, what? I'm not really... I think a ranger probably wants... We could take a quick look here to see what they recommend. But I'm... Let's see. Rangers can fight with any armor. Exceptional strength. They gain bonuses. If they have constitution of 17 plus, we want to make sure we have a, at least a 17 on the con. And this says they need at least a 13 strength, 14 in wisdom and constitution. It says the prime requisites for rangers are strength, intelligence, and wisdom. So I guess they use intelligence for some for something. I don't know. Do they get spells eventually? You know, just I'm not. I haven't played rangers again, so I'm not really. 100% sure what all they could do. And I assume they get some kind of spells later on. Let's go ahead and then, so let's see, we want a good int roll, a good strength roll. Int is 15, that's not too bad. Uh, 15 con, that's okay. Now this is like an okay roll. <laughs> 
I guess we'll go with it. It's not too bad. And let's see, who do we want our who do we want for our dwarf? Uh, how about who looks kind of like a dwarven name? How about Lorenz? <laughs> Lorenzo. Let's make it Lorenzo. That sounds like a dwarf name. Lorenzo the Dwarf. Oh, so I guess he'll be a... Uh, have a bow. So I guess they want you to do a... a ranged uh, weapon for this, but we don't have to. We could always just change the weapon. I really see him more as like an axe wielder. Probably want to have a shield, though. Well, let's go back to one of these has a shield and an axe. Eh, nope. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm imagining. Let's keep this. And let's change up the colors so we don't get them mixed up. Uh, let's see. Weapon colors, fine, body. Go green. I mean, a ranger should be in camouflage, right? And then we can change the uh, hair. Let's give him kind of a... There we go. That's starting to look like a dwarf. Now let's change the second color of the leg. I don't want those <laughs> blue pants. <coughs> there we go. That looks... Okay, I guess. <laughs> Let's go ahead and change the shield color, too. So some of these... Uh, oh, didn't keep that one. If you look very closely, there's actually two different colors on that. Like there'll be like a little highlight color. And then you have to say, keep it. Okay, there is our dwarf, Lorenzo the Dwarf Ranger. Let's go ahead and add these folks. Put Sarah there, Lorenzo there. Okay, then we got to make uh, four more. And let's do a, uh, let's see, what do we want? Probably a cleric. Probably just want a straight up cleric character. And for that, I'd probably want to go with an elf, maybe a half elf. Let's do the Qualanesti elf. Male. You know, this is where you really get tempted you know, to try one of these combinations. Now, the problem with the combo class is it takes longer to level up. So you level up like a cleric level, then you level up a fighter level. It just kind of drags everything out. Uh, you know, sometimes I go with this cleric mage. But I think the cleric is just so critical, you probably just want at least one dedicated cleric. Now, here's where the cleric gets interesting. So you got all these options, and again, you have to go look in the manual or the journal, I guess, to see what's the difference between these gods. It says it here somewhere. Where does it say? Maybe that's in the manual? No, it's got to be in the... Let's see if we can find uh, where it talks about these uh, gods. Uh, Majir. Ability score somewhere here. Cleric. Where does it say? The, there's the Moons of Magic. Okay, here we go. Good aligned gods. And you can see you got a... If you're with Paladine, you get an extra spell called Protection from Evil, which is really good. But the one that was recommended by the most people, there's two that are really compelling, and you notice some are only for neutral gods. See, so if you pick Lawful Good, you're kind of limited to these. But the Mishackle... Mishackle? Never sure how to pronounce that one. You get plus one die on all healing spells. And you get extra spells, Charm Person, Remove Curse, and Bless. That's going to be hard to beat. Uh, you can go with Majir instead, though, because they get this super great turning undead. And there's quite a bit of undead. And you get Silence 15 foot radius, which would be good when you... There's a lot of spellcasters in this game, too. So either one of those, I think, would be strong choices. <laughs> if you look at Rourke's down here, you get plus one to your Thacko, which that might... That's more powerful than... Or that's a bigger deal than you might realize. But I'm going to go... Uh, again, I'm kind of seeing this character as a healer. Uh, so I think Mystical 
will be the way to go. Uh, so we're kind of backwards. I guess you pick your guy and then it tells you what options there are for uh, alignments. Okay, yeah, the 18 strength looks good, but we do not want a 15 wisdom on our uh, cleric. You want at least an 18 wisdom. So let's keep, there we go. There's 18 wisdom. Strength is low, low, low. 14, that's going to suck. Constitution is looking pretty good. And you only need one character with decent charisma, by the way. If that. <laughs> Let's see, do we want to keep that? I'm just kind of, I don't like that low. That strength is just too low. All right, here's 17 wisdom, 18 strength, but again, I, there we go. So now we've got 18 wisdom and 18 strength and a decent con, a good dex. So I think that's probably about as good as we can expect without cheating. Let's <laughs> say so don't reroll. And let's see, what character? Let's go with, uh... D Forte. D Forte. That sounds like a cleric. Okay, and that set him up with a hammer, which is cool, but let's change up these colors. Let's give him a uh, <laughs> green hair. <laughs> Make him bald. <laughs> Go blonde. <clears throat> and then let's change the color of the body. Make it, I think it should be, you know, maybe a gray. You see how it's just changing the little underside there. And let's change up the uh, sleeves a little bit. And that looks okay. It doesn't make a huge difference. You probably don't want to spend all your time there fiddling with it. Okay, so now we've got our cleric. Uh, now we need to create a rogue-like character, and for this one, I want to do a kinder because they get that awesome hoopick. But there's another another little wrinkle here. You don't want to go straight uh, thief because uh, it's not a very good class. You're limited in terms of uh, armor choices, and you know it's just not all that strong. I I think the thief can do the backstab only in only if they're wearing uh, a leather armor. You know, so that could be something that you might want to consider. However, I was reading a lot of the guides and they kept saying, do the cleric fighter. This cleric fighter combo is really strong. Gives you a little backup healing. Uh, so I think I'm going to try that. And then again, we get to choose a god. And it's kind of funny that it works, isn't it? I, think, I thought it said that that was for dwarves only. Or maybe the dwarf is the only one that gets the benefit from that. So, uh, Let's see. I don't know. What would be a good choice? I guess we'd go Majir on this one, maybe. Give him a little bit of an extra turn power. Let's go Lawful Good again. You know what I might do differently? You know, I think maybe... I'm curious if the... Uh, the mages are limited when both camp combat type. Okay, so it looks like the mages can cast any spell. Or the clerics can uh, cast any spell from the books. The, the mages, there's a different spell book for neutral ones and good ones. So you want to have one good, one neutral. But I don't think it matters much for these... Uh, Uh, for the clerics. Let's see, reroll stats. Yeah, let's see if we can get. We want to hide dexterity for the rogue. So we really want an 18 wisdom and 18 dex. If. Ooh, 19 dex. That is really good. But the, look at the wisdom's kind of stinky. 16, 17, 16, 16, 18, 14. Uh, let's see, I like at least a 17. 16, 17, come on. You can see how this could easily consume like hours. <laughs> 19, 15, that is, that might be about as good as I'm going to get. You know, I would like to have a higher score for wisdom, but 15's not too bad. 
And I like this, everything else being above uh, 15. It's a pretty well-rounded character. I really love that 18 con. So I'll go ahead and take that. And we'll call this character... Uh, let's see. Um, what is a good name? I think Winkler. <laughs> that sounds very kinderish. It looks pretty good right out of the box, too. Let's change up the color of the... Make him red. Nope, 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 nope. So I think it's that. Yes, and then we want to change up the leg. Maybe the arm. It looks like there's a little bit of green on the on the sleeve. Green sleeves. Change that to uh, see if we can make it match that blue of the pants. Is that looks about right? Yeah, I don't really like this red-blue combo. <laughs> yeah, the yellow looks a little better to me, I think. Let's try the... There we go. Let's make the hair a different color, too, so it doesn't... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Green. Huh? Why not? White hair... White-haired kinder. And we, let's change up that weapon. Because we want a hoop hack. And nope, 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 nope. Where is the hoop hack? I know they've got one. There it is. At least I think that's a hoop hack. That's how I imagine it looks anyway. Okay. Yes, Winkler. Welcome, Winkler. Okay, so we got our thief. Now we want to make a couple of mages. And there's a lot of debate here. Oh, man. You know, people say, do uh, you want to do like a fighter mage or something so you can um, have armor? A pretty good argument there, but it's also great to have that power. And once you get these mages up high enough level where they can really start rocking some powerful spells like fireballs, I mean, it's just oh so good. I don't want to slow that down. So I'm going to go at least at least one of the mages I want, just pure mage. Now this is important. Okay, so you want at least one good, and then you want to do a neutral to get the full gamut of spells. So we can make this one lawful good, but the second one, we're definitely going to want to go neutral. And I think I'll probably just make two dedicated mages. I mean, I know that's not the most popular option, but uh, again, I just I like to get those spells, and I like the firepower. Reroll the stats. <laughs> yeah, we don't want a 15. I want an 18 intelligence. That's yeah, there we go. Uh, strength, you don't. It's not these, these guys shouldn't be in melee range anyway. So we get int of 18. Uh, Con's looking okay. Dex is a little bit lower than I would like. Con is okay. The charisma score is... That's 18, but that's not all that great of a score. You know... I'm going to go... I'm going to keep rolling. I want... Okay, there's an 18 int. 15 con... Yeah, you see when that in, when that dexterity goes up, you see that armor class going down. You know that's a big deal. If these guys do, you know it's quite common that they'll get into harm's way. <laughs> it's really nice that there's at least a small chance they could dodge. So that's 18 int. Everything else is kind of low though. Let's just keep rolling. Okay, that looks good. Okay, now we got 18 int. And an 18 dex and a decent con. So you see his armor class is down to six. <laughs> so this is this will be a really good. I'm really happy with that. Oh man, I oh crap. Ah, that always happens to me. <laughs> I accidentally hit reroll. Oh geez. Okay, what was it before? Maybe we can get back to it. 18. Uh, nope. Close. I want that 16 dex. Well, that's 
Why is it only seven? Oh, dexterity is 17. But the int is 18, the strength is okay, con is okay. Maybe we'll just go with this. I mean, it's, I'd rather have the six, but, <laughs> you know, 17 dex is all right. You know, sometimes this can happen. You just get clicking too quick. Let's make this one Pierre. Actually, Aiden, I think, is... That sounds a little bit more elf-like. Okay, that looks okay out of the box, but let's change up the head. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, that looks kind of magey. Wait a minute, though. I don't think elves... This is a pure elf, and I don't think they have beards. <laughs> let's go with this. <laughs> Uh, an elf with sort of male pattern baldness. Okay, exit. Uh, I don't know. Do I want, if I really want to be looking at this icon? For, oh, did I? What happened? What? Ah, oh, man, what is going on with this elf? Let me try this again. Jeez, I keep messing up. Awful good. Uh, Reroll stance. Well, it worked out okay because this is what I really wanted anyway. Okay, character name Aiden. So let's. I'm not going to change anything this time except for the head. Yeah, that, that's fine, but I don't like the color of the hat. <laughs> Can I change the color of the hat? Is it considered hair? Nope. What is that considered? Like head? Face? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no, no, I I think I can just exit. Okay. How do I change the hat color? It's not weapon. Not body, it's not face. Parts? No. Head? Oh, maybe you can't change the color of the hat. Well, okay. It's not too bad. I guess we, if we really wanted to, we could change up the uh, um, other parts. Okay, let's add him. So let's say three. We need one more character. Uh, hmm, what do we want? I definitely want another mage. I'm just wondering if I might want a multi-class. You know, I'm thinking of making a half-elf just to have one in the party. Eh, really tempted to try out maybe a mage. Fighter mage, maybe. Cleric mage. Oh, that's a tough call. You know, maybe I'll just try the fighter mage. Ah, I can't do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> Let's do the true neutral. That way he'll have the... Uh... Yeah, he's a red mage, so he'll have a different spell book. Reroll the stats. Yes, let's give him... Again, 18 int is really the main thing. You don't want a mage. It's not really really smart okay so we got 18 int dexterity is only 17 but we're just gonna go with this I'm gonna spend all day on it reroll stats no and then who will our last character be I'm trying to think who have I not picked before some people's names are just a little bit more fantasy like there's a character, there's a person here named Shadow Tiger. <laughs> that sounds kind of vaguely uh, elf. I can imagine like a half elf going around calling himself Shadow Tiger. <laughs> Why not? Probably more of a roguish thing, but. And we'll just make that the name of our mage. You know, this is fantasy, folks. There's a story there. There's a story as to why he's called Shadow Tiger. <laughs> I don't know what it is, <laughs> but there is a story. And I'm not really seeing this guy wearing that, those colors, right? He would have, uh, 
Let's change up the body. Oh, that's kind of neat. I kind of like that effect. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, like a little bit of a sparkle there. It looks kind of cool. Uh, nope, not that one. Let's see, second color body. Oh, crap, wrong one. Leg. Let's see if we can make that match. Oh, maybe that's why it's called Shadow Tiger. <laughs> it's got like a shadowy looking robe. Oh, that looks pretty cool. And let's change his uh, head, I think. Is that parts? No. Yeah, hair. Let's give him like black hair. I guess, did I make him a half elf? So he, he could have a beard. Now, why are those arms back to green? Damn you! I want a black. Yeah, that. There's like a little bit of green on those arms. It's like, damn it, you will be green, arms! No. I want the blue. Give me the blue, give me the blue. Was that it? Is that the same color? <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I could never be a painter. There's just no way. I can barely tell. To me, that looks like... It looks like the same color to me. I could be... <laughs> it's probably somebody screaming like, No, Mr. Are you blind? Color blind, maybe. I don't know. I uh, guess Shadow Tiger, welcome to the pack. Okay, there we go. I think we are ready to rumble. So let's get this party started. At the end of the last home and solace, a brave band gathers in preparation for a grim journey. The lands reconquered from the dragon armies are to be scoured of the last vestiges of evil. Joining you on the trip is an older knight of the Rose. He is introduced as Sir Carl Gards. His mission is to evaluate the outpost for the Council of Knights. So again, all the backstory of this is in those novels. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. <laughs> uh, once the company is organized, you begin the journey to the outpost. The party travels through Salamnia and arrives near Throttle. You are escorted to see the Commandant. Ah, look at those lovely mustaches. Sir Carl greets you at the office. The Commandant and I are discussing some important issues. Your first mission is to patrol throttle and report any suspicious activities immediately. Sir Carl continues and you record it in Journal Entry 51. There we go. So that means we've got to open up the journal. Now in the gold box companion, this is built in, so you, I'll show you that once we activate it. But you know, if you didn't have that, you come here, check the box. You know, these are designed, I guess, so you could tick it as you go to it. So let's see, journal entry 51. The worst monsters our scouts have reported anywhere in the area are hobgoblins. Draconians and evil dragons have long since abandoned this area to our forces. Still, be a little wary on your way to throttle. Also, be sure to report back here immediately if anything unusual or dangerous occurs. This outpost depends on information brought back by patrols such as yours. Good luck, and may Paladine watch over you. You know, I'm just going to go out on a limb and engage in a little fortune telling, a little prediction that there will be some trouble. <laughs> Also, buy and ready equipment from the Armory. Uh, and it's got a U in there, so you know it's fancy. Memorize spells before going out. Oh, where do you wish to go? Uh, yes, yeah, so we want to go to the Armory, because only one of our characters has any gear right now, and that will be Sarah, our knight. So let's see, Armory. Now we get to have a... I always love this. I don't know what it is, but I, I love buying gear. So unfortunately, the best uh, we can do at this point is ring mail. So we definitely want to get that at least. 
And let's see, this was a, a ranger? I think they can wear, surely they can wear ring mail and use a shield. Let's go ahead and do the shield and the, you want to buy a couple of uh, swords. Yeah, and the reason that you want to have two is because we're going to run into monsters called Baz Draconians, and sometimes they will take your weapon. Okay, let's look at that. So now Lorenzo's AC is down to 5 with a Thacko of 18. If we have enough money, maybe we can buy a bow for him as well. Now this is our cleric. And they can also wear ring mail and use a shield. And we want to buy a couple of maces. I think that will do it for that person. Now one of the sucky things about this game is they, they really limit your ranged options. Like, I don't even think a cleric can use a... I know the mages are stuck with darts, which, that's a stinker. I think the uh, the cleric might be able to use some ranged weapons, but it's not going to be all that important. After all, they can wear armor, so they could be a little closer up to the front. This is our cleric fighter. Did I make a cleric fighter? Oh, this is our kinder. Oh, it was supposed to be a cleric thief. Oh, I screwed that up. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, yes, yeah, get the money. Uh, let's see. I totally screwed that up, but I think we can still fix it since we're just here at the beginning. Uh, we want to go to the hall. Drop Winkler. <laughs> Drop him forever. <laughs> Poor Winkler. And let's make another one because I totally screwed that up. We want a we want a cleric thief. Not a cleric uh, fighter. And let's see, Major, neutral good. Reroll the stats. Uh, I'm looking for an eight. Man, I'm having a tough time with this today. Okay, my kinder. Male. Cleric. Thief. Majeur. Neutral good. Okay, reroll the stats. Yes, we want a dexterity of 18 and a wisdom of 18. Might take a few clicks to get there. Oh, I had dexterity of 19 there for a second. That was exciting. Close. You know, I might settle for 17s. I really like an 18, though. Oh, uh, can't. 19 and 13, 17 and 16, 16 and 16. It's playing with me. <laughs> Uh, 17 and 16. You know, I'm just not going to settle for anything less than an 18. I, I really want at least one of those scores to be 18. Uh, can I do it? Okay. I'm going to play a couple more. 16 and 19, we'll just go with that. Probably about as good as I can get. Uh, character name. All right. Winkler. And let, the only thing I'll change is the weapon. Give him the hoop pack again. There we go. Keep. Exit. Yes. Winkler. Add Winkler back. And you're back, Winkler. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's pretty cool. Just put me right back into the action. Let's try the, uh, the armory. Now, the curious, what I'm wondering about, I'm pretty sure it says you can't backstab if you're not wearing, if you're wearing anything beyond leather. So, to me, that might be... He is, I'm kind of imagining him being mostly using ranged weapons. Not really using that backstab all that much, but... 
you know, Kinders get pretty good AC anyway, so I might just start off with leather armor. I can always upgrade it later. And I don't know if they can, I don't know how the shields will work, but he should be able to use a, a mace, or he's got a hoop pack, I guess. Let's go ahead and buy an extra hoop pack. That'll be his weapon. Okay, and that should be about it for him. Okay, so that gives him an AC of 4. So he's got a pretty decent AC, even with that leather. So I think he'll be alright, really. Okay, so let's see. We've got him taken care of. Our cleric is good. Uh, the mages, I guess they probably only want a... Uh, about the only thing we need to buy from them is a quarterstaff. And I guess some darts. Oh, we're already out of money. Wow. And then when you have darts like this, you have to join them together. The problem is the darts are actually kind of expensive, you know, especially starting out, so you might not want to throw too many of them. It does give them something to do, but... You know, again, ideally you don't want these guys in the front row... You know, that alone might be a decent reason to make a fighter mage. Just so they can use their uh, short bow or something. That'd make them a lot more useful when they're not casting spells. Okay, so we got everybody geared up. <clears throat> Quarterstaff. Mason ringmail. Longsword. Yeah, she has plate mail and a longsword. Go ahead and buy an extra long sword for her. Okay, make sure the golden. I think that should be. Everybody should be looking pretty good. Okay, now we got to go to the inn. And we get to memorize our spells. Always fun. Uh, so let's see. I, don't, I think the ranger does get spells eventually, just not yet. Okay, so the spells that we want to learn. Uh, apparently, um, you know, remove curse. I think that will come in handy a little bit later. I have to look up in the manual see what all that covers. But I think bless for sure. That's a good combat prepping spell. Charm person. Oh, I guess you get all three of these. That's interesting. Uh, first level. So we've already got a bless. A cure light wounds would be good. Protection. Detect magic. I don't know if you necessarily need that. It's 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 useful when you're, you're looking at a big pile of loot, trying to figure out is there anything worth keeping. Um, but it does, you know, take up a slot, and you can sort of usually you can sort of tell if there might be something magical anyway. So maybe pass on that for now. Uh, protection from evil. I think that is a pretty good, you know, prep spell. Maybe might be worth picking up. But I just think the bless the bless is huge. The cure light wounds is huge. Probably don't need resist cold right now. So that's how you do that. And then we've got our mages. So let's go uh, sleep, <laughs> sleep, <laughs> sleep, and maybe one magic missile. That sleep is going to be absolutely huge. So right now they've they got the same spells, I guess, but later on they will have different options. The read magic is good if you want to scribe a scroll. We'll get to those a little bit later. And enlarge is a decent spell that adds to your strength, I believe. So that's a good prep spell as well. Not quite sure how long it lasts, but you know, just to have it, just to have a little variety, I'll pick that. Of course, magic missiles one of the favorites. Always hits. Guaranteed to do some damage and, and the, the big thing in this game as you'll see will just be missing missing like every attack miss 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 the monsters don't seem to have that problem uh, But we just can't seem to hit the side of a barn uh, So maybe having that magic missile, you know, just lets you finally get rid of the damn battle <laughs> And you can move on. I mean it really is that hard sometimes uh, Oh, yeah, and then we have Winkler's spells. Okay. He's got that silence and uh, we probably want to do a cure light wounds or two. Maybe a 
Yeah, I'll give him a detect magic. I, I kind of see this guy as like my backup cleric, right? So maybe he can take on some of the some of those spells. Now we have to rest. It's easy to do this here, but if you're in the field, sometimes you'll get attacked. I think that's about it. I think we're good to go at this point. Uh, one thing I will do is uh, alter the order of the party. So let's put our that guy there, I think. Yeah, Winkler. So what you want to do is look here at your AC. That is still very high. Lorenzo. For some reason... I think he's a dwarf, right? Now, for some reason, dwarves, I don't know if it penalizes their AC or something, but they just really seem to get hit a lot. That crummy AC. <clears throat> Alright, one more thing. We need to save it. In slot. Let's put it in... i just record over my... I, I made a backup. Okay, so that's in saving. So now we get to activate the... All important gold box companion. So do a search. There we go. And it's activating. And now I just need to bring it into focus so you guys can see it. So one second here and I will do that. There we go. Let me see if I can just fine-tune it a little bit so you can see the whole screen. I'm going to have to redo it just a little bit here. Um, let's see. Always a little bit tricky to get this just right, but <laughs> I imagine you want to see the whole thing. Okay. There, stretch it out to there. Here. I'm using a X split, by the way, in case anybody is curious. X split broadcaster. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so as you can see here, now we have a HUD across the top of the screen, and that alone is worth <laughs> the price of admission. Because uh, once you you know when we're in combat, you, you, it's not there's not an easy way to look up and see how everybody's doing. So that is huge. It also keeps track of their XP, so you can see how quickly you're uh, leveling up. It has the effects there. You can see the dwarf has these bonuses, ranger bonus, etc. Uh, so that little bar across the top of the screen is good enough. But then you got the auto map over here to the side. Not a whole lot going on there now because it's just the world map. Uh, but then if you dive into here, you can see they've got the journal. Um, you can fix, you can store your spells. Now this is, uh, I was playing around with this. To me, this is almost like cheating, uh, just to restore your spells uh, automatically instead of like going through and selecting them. But it's, it's trying to help with that problem of having to go in every time and, you know, select all of those spells and memorize them again. Um, I'm not sure what race hack does. Obviously, it's some kind of hack. Backup, backup save is cool if you want to, you know, just to, just in case you mess up and want to be able to go back, you can make a backup. It works a little differently than the standard. It basically is saving the file itself rather than the in-game system. Uh, and then that's, I think the settings gives us a few options. Auto ammo. Actually, what are some of these settings? Restore map, increase map, decrease might make it a little smaller. Dock map, icon, icons, auto ID. So some of this is probably more like cheating. XP meter on and off. I kind of like the XP meter. And so I'll just leave that alone for now. But anyway, it's already proving useful. But as you'll see, once we get into the dungeon, it's even better. Okay, I think we're good to go. Now we can go to the bar and have some drinks. This is always fun. Uh, what will you drink? And I think the dwarf is probably already wanting some ale. So that'll see. Tavern Tell 40. 
And I'm pretty sure that this handy dandy thing up here does not have, it's got journals, but I don't think it's got the, uh, let's see, journal. Oh, it just takes this. Yeah, it will show you this, show you in the editor, but I don't think they list the, list the tavern tales. Let's see, what was it, tavern tale? Was it 17? Uh, I think it was 17, right? So we could do it. Oh, come back. <laughs> Get over here. It's 17. I won't. There we go, finally. A young woman has her eye on Sir Carl. It's making him uncomfortable. Yeah, so it's kind of fun to, you know, you can, re in this game you can just relax and hear the tales as well. Um, but it's just a little way to get a little flavor text. Sometimes they'll give you clues about things. A little, a little background is fun. Let's just do one more. Relax. Let's try the relax option. You hear Tavern Tale 23, as yes, sure. Which is, it's been too quiet for too long. Something's got to happen. And the fun thing about these games is that a lot of the journal entries and the tavern tells, some of these are just completely, you know, red herrings. Uh, sometimes you don't even ever hear the tale in the game itself. It's just there to trap people that read indiscriminately. <laughs> and so that's always kind of fun. But I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get out of town because I, believe it or not, am dying to get into combat. And man, let me just say this first battle we're going to get into, it kicked, it has kicked my butt on numerous occasions. It is not playing around at all. As Utapu rise, you spot a caravan under attack. Draconians have already massacred the men and are now slaughtering the women and children. They pause when they see you, then rush to attack. So again, no, no, no chance to prep. <laughs> it's a good thing you memorized all those prep spells, because now you can't use them. All right, so this is uh, the battle map here. You can see my gold box companion has changed. I can't move the mouse over there, but uh, it gave me the sort of tactical grid view. And the little squares and the numbers inside the squares are showing me the, the hit points of the mobs, as well as my party. So let's see, we're starting here. And what I like to do, especially when the, they're really spread out like that, is just delay. If I'm not worried about a ranged attack or spell casters, I'll just let them move first. So they, so they can, uh, yeah, so they'll get a little closer. And then I can... So these are those draconians, and I think these are the ones that will take your weapons away. And they're spread out, so it's not going to be really easy to do my uh, sleep spell. So let's see. Lorenzo, you can have the honors of the first attack. Now here's the deal. If I run up to him, he'll get a free attack on me. So what I'm going to do instead of that is guard. And that way, when he comes up there to try to take a swipe at me, I will get an attack on him instead. And I'll just do that for all of these characters, so he will really get a lot of damage when he moves into that spot. And then I think for these guys, I don't... I'll go ahead and throw a dart. It's really good to take them out with ranged weapons, because then you don't... But you got to be really close with the dart. I mean really close. Even this might be too far. There we go. Two points of damage. Now the Hoopik has a lot better range. But he missed. Let's get their wizard in there too. Let's have him throw a dart. There'll be a chance to rest after this. So not really worried about <coughs> wasting spells or anything. Matter of fact, why don't we just go ahead and throw, a, throw an enlarge spell on somebody. Let's put it on uh, Lorenzo. I have a giant dwarf. Unaffected. Oh, I guess it doesn't work on him. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What other magic do we have? Um, we could do the magic missile. Although I don't... I wonder if the magic missile will work on a draconian. I know they're magic resistant. Oh, he took five damage. Okay, so we're good there. Might actually be able to take that guy out. Before he gets to us, uh, let's see. Um, I'll just do the guarding again, I suppose. There we go. So, boom, took him out before he even got a shot on us. 
Now one thing you do need to do, and I forgot to do this, is slow down the game speed. Otherwise it's going to go so quickly you'll, there's no way you'll be able to see what's going on. So again, we're just going to do the delay. Well, where did that guy come from? Okay, somehow one of them snuck up behind me there. That's not cool. Let's go ahead and hit him with a... Now you can easily put your own people to sleep and paralyze your own people. So you got to be careful with that. Uh, let's see. So he... And you can't use a ranged weapon when they're up close to you like this. And if you try to move back, you'll get a free attack. Okay, so well, this is not looking too great at the moment. Now he... What we might be able to do here... Let's see, done. I want to see if I can do a backstab. So let's move him here. And he's already down to four health. I mean, that is not good. Let's change into a quarter staff. And let me just try this little theory out. So, okay, he missed, but maybe my. We'll see if my uh, Kinder can backstab. Yeah, he did a backstab. Okay, but he missed. <laughs> but it, it is working. All right, so I'm going to get killed here. Let's try the sleep spell. These guys are kind of resistant to it. And I want to put it here because it's got a, I think, a range of uh, about that. I think it'll be able to hit those two uh, draconians. Yeah, one's asleep. Oh, they both asleep. Awesome. So this battle just got a lot more easy. Now I think if I, let me just show you this. If I just attack now, he'll turn around. <clears throat> or maybe not. <laughs> okay. I don't quite understand those rules, I suppose. Yeah, so since they're asleep, you can just take them out with one shot. <clears throat> so yet, sir, uh, let's see if I get another back. So that time he turned around. But you see, I don't know if you saw that. It flashed up real quick that he lost his weapon. It doesn't take it away permanently. You get it after the battle. It's just. You know, if you don't have a backup, you have to spend the rest of the battle using your fists. Unless you took the precaution of having an extra weapon. Alright, that was a lot easier with this party. Man, last time I had to redo that one a few times. Okay, 108 experience points. Everybody's dancing, looking happy up there. A couple of damage characters. Now you want to share the gold. Now, there's a little thing about Sarah. Sarah is, you know, she's so pious as a Slavnik knight. Whenever she goes to town, she will give 10% of her money. And, you know, once you get up into those other orders, it gets a lot more serious. Uh, to the temple, or to the local uh, Slavnik headquarters, I guess, tithing. So one thing you might do is just make sure she's never got any money on her. <laughs> so you can, like, pool it and then just give it to a character who's not a knight. However, I think that's a little bit sneaky. I don't particularly like that strategy. Let's see, the caravan, the caravan lies in waste before you. The air is filled, filled with the sounds of wailing women and children. All the draconians are slain save one, who rips a book from a dead man's hands. He turns to you and merely laughs. Then he takes a step and disappears. So, hmm, what was that book? One of the surviving women comes up. Brave warriors, will you help us reach the outpost? All our menfolk have died. Do you help? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course we're going to help. Thank you for your help. Congratulations, the party gains experience. And look at that, Winkler, 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 Winkler. Already ready to level up. Awesome. See, well, there goes Sarah straight to the, straight to the knighthood to tie their 10%. All right, and that's, uh, you know, first little bit of the game done. That wasn't too bad. So let's see. Uh, we want to uh, level up Lorenzo. So we go to the Hall Train character. 
Winkler. Did I say Lorenzo? I meant Winkler. Level 3 Thief. Oh, yes. So that'll give him a few. Nice, doing a little dance. Cool. A few extra hit points, probably. <clears throat> go ahead and save it. And we're going to want to go to the end to do our spells again. But let's go ahead and take a quick trip. Do we get any? We got a little bit of gold, right? Let's see. Armory. Did anybody get any gems or jewelry? I don't think we've got any gems yet. So we just pull the gold, and I think what I'll do is buy some. I want to buy him a, a dwarf, a short bow, and some arrows. Just so he can do something besides the guarding routine. And then we can uh, join those arrows together. Oops. Yeah, I guess we do need to ready them. And you see, we need to ready that long sword again. I guess, yeah, that, that's good. It doesn't hurt you to switch weapons around in the middle of combat, which is always nice. And I think we might want to do the same thing for... Uh... Oh, I didn't mean to give her a hoop pack. You know, give all these uh, fighter types some arrows just so they can, you know, do a little damage from a distance. Let's see new items. You probably don't want to get too carried away with it. <clears throat> Let's see, exit. And I don't, I'm pretty sure, again, I don't think our cleric can use any ranged weapons. Maybe a staff sling. So I'm not going to worry about him. The mages, this character though, this is our, our cleric thief. I don't know if a thief, can a thief use a short bow? I'm going to have to look that up real quick. Let's see, weapons, not a whole lot of weapons in this game. I think Poole had more weapons than this. Yeah, it says a fighter can use a short bow, or a thief can use a short bow. So that might be a good option for this character. So let's buy Winkler. Oh, the no, what am I thinking? He's a kinder, he's going to be using a hoop pack the whole time. <laughs> Why do I keep forgetting that? Okay. So I think we're pretty good, except for maybe buy a few darts. And I really wish that they would let you buy like packs of like 50, 60 darts at a time. This gets a little bit old. And again, that might be a good reason to pick a uh, some kind of a combination fighter, thief mage, something like that. Just so you could use that uh, better ranged weapon. And you know something else i've never been able to figure out like where is where does it say how much gold i have <laughs> you know we pull the gold but i don't see like where is the gold it doesn't say it anywhere that i can see it must somewhere on this screen it must be like amount of gold oh i guess take okay so i got six yeah so really you can see the darts <laughs> You know, it's one gold a pop. So I'm going to run out of gold just buying darts. So let's get a few. You think they, you think a wizard, a mage, would be smart enough to run around and like collect his darts? <laughs> After the battle? You know, like a dartboard? You don't just buy new darts every time you throw a dart at a dartboard? No! You go and you get your darts. They just haven't quite figured that out yet. Okay, let's fix. Everybody's back up to health, and then we need to uh, redo our spells. I guess he didn't cast any. So let's see, he did a uh, sleep. I think he cast enlarge on the dwarf that didn't work. Let's just stick to the magic missile. And then the same thing here, do a sleep and a magic missile. And rest up. I think that's all the spells we cast, right? 
Do, 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 gold box. <laughs> Save. Don't quit. Now let's go back to the commandant. Uh, you enter the office to the sounds of battle. Sir Carl drives his sword through the commandant who collapses. The body then rides and becomes a civac. It's a type of draconian. Sir Carl murmurs, I was afraid of this. So you'd have to read the journal that came with the game to know what the hell they're talking about here. But you know, the, the premise of this is we've been sent here to investigate uh, because there's some some of the characters are acting strangely and you know here it's revealed that they're acting strangely because they are in fact draconians in disguise <laughs> as you report his face grows gray this is much worse than we feared we have a patrol in throttle Kiramon leads it that's a character from the uh, chronicles of war of the twins one of my favorites kind of like basically kind of like conan but he's got a twin brother <laughs> Named Raceland, that's a really cool character too. But uh, anyway, it's a big, big character, literally and figuratively. Uh, so find Karaman. Uh, tell him he is desperately needed here. The imposter has emptied this outpost of troops. I know you are inexperienced, but I have no one else to send. Isn't that always the way? <laughs> Where do you wish to go? So we need to get out of town. And that little circle up there to the right is going to be throttled. And right when we get there, we're going to have to fight a hellacious battle. <laughs> so that's probably where we'll have to reload. So let's just get up there. Uh, you are near throttle. Do you enter? Let's not enter quite yet. Because I want to cast some spells. <laughs> we want to be fully prepared. Because <laughs> this battle is tough. Uh, let's see, who can cast, I think, yeah, let's cast a bless. And if you do it in camp, it blesses everybody, see? So I think that lasts for six rounds. And that would be good for that person. And then let's see, do we have anything else worth casting? None of those. <laughs> yeah, cast sleep. So I think that's probably good. Just save it again with that spell on. For some reason, I was thinking I had like a protection from evil spell, but maybe that was my other game. Oops. Oh, did that wipe out my... <sighs> I guess when I moved, it messed up my... Uh... I lost my bless spell. So how do I, how am I supposed to do this then? Just see about, try it again. Let's see, so they're blessed. Okay, so how do I just enter the town? Oh, is there like a, I don't see any other commands here. But if I move, I'll lose my ability. Okay, I guess there's nothing else for it. As soon as we move, we lose that bless. Okay. Well, I guess we can't prep for battle. <laughs> what happens if I leave? Let's see. Throttle's off limits to you. Leave and no one gets hurt. What do you do? Leave. You are near throttle. Do you enter? So what if I, like, cast it here? I know there's there's got to be a way to prep for battle, folks. I, just, I know there is. So I'm just going to keep at it until I get it right. Okay, yep. Rest. Okay, got her. Nope, don't stop. What? Keep resting. Ah! Okay, cast. Bless. Okay, everybody's blessed. Exit. Exit. No, as soon as I move, I lose it. Man. I guess there's just no way to prep for this battle. You just have to go in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, it would have been nice to have a bless spell, but uh, oh well. <laughs> uh, Winkler, as a... Uh, a kinder, he's got this yell, so if there's any spellcasters 
uh, they'll target him, and supposedly it lowers the AC and the Thacko of all the enemies that are affected by it, too. I haven't been able to confirm that, but that's the theory anyway. So that might be a good way to start. I don't see any spellcasters in the mix, but let's go ahead and try this this uh, yell and see what happens. <laughs> Hobgoblin wants to kill Winky. <laughs> Hobgoblin wants to kill Winkler, kill Winkler. They're out to get you, Winkler. It's not paranoia if it's true. <laughs> Everybody hates Winkler. I don't know what you said to those hobgoblins, Winkler, but uh, <laughs> I guess it was insensitive. Man, you know you're a born troll. Oh, but... <laughs> well, there we go. Okay. Now, the spell that will make the difference here is sleep. And it doesn't give me much info here, but I'm pretty sure it's a, basically a square. So I'm going to cast it, try to hit as many as I can. And it doesn't last forever, so you really want to kill the ones that are sleeping. Because they will come, they will wake up fairly quickly and come after you. But look at this. This is already sending a lot of enemies to sleep and be able to take them out easily. Okay, case in point. Now I, I could try a charm person as well. <clears throat> Why don't we try that out? Instant cast. Let's see if we can target this guy. Unaffected. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> Dims and breaks. <laughs> All right, here's Lorenzo, and he's not in range of any of the ones that have the uh, that, that are asleep. So we'll just have to uh, attack. Or miss at random. And here's our other mage. And I want to send these guys to sleep because they will attack my mage, and I don't like that. Hopefully, that warrior will fall asleep too. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, let's go to sleep. Ooh, from behind. You see that? This is getting nasty already. So I can start taking out some of these ones that are asleep. Nobody's... The Forte is down to four hit points already. That's not good. So I could try to... Which one's the Forte? Let's do a Cure Light Wounds on him. So that spell has to warm up a little bit, so basically we'll come back to him later. Take out that one. Damn! And the fourth day died before I could even get to him. Jeez, I don't think that'll work. Yeah, oh well. I don't want to waste the spell, so I'll just have to cast it on Lorenzo. So then the character's down, so I can try to bandage him. But it basically sucks. He's not dead yet, but he's dying. So it gives you a few rounds to try to bandage him before it's he dies. It's really unlucky he died so quickly. He's just in a bad spot. I probably want to use this guy to bandage. Okay, he's stuck up there. Now we can go back to the kinder. Why is that not working? Oh, he lost his weapon last time. Okay. I'm gonna have Lorenzo. Start trying to take out some of these hobgoblins. Man. What is this thing you call armor? I think I'm going to have to keep sending more of them to sleep because they're just doing incredible damage. Now see, if I cast it there, though, they'll be able to hit some of my guys. Let's try there. That one's asleep. Just one of those warriors could pretty much just kill my whole party. <clears throat> so I'm going to just take him out now. Good job, Sarah. <laughs> the only confident party member. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got that. So he's already out of spells. So all he can do is just use his uh, staff. He's got, looks like, a couple spells. Let's try that magic missile. 
since we know that'll hit for sure, and start trying to ding this hobgoblin leader. And again, you can't leave these guys up for long because they will they will pop out of it. Okay. Just keep on. One of the lovely things about the gold box games is once you do enough damage, they will surrender. So you don't necessarily have, especially if it's an intelligent creature like a hobgoblin or human, they won't just fight to the death. Some some things will, like a skeleton, you're screwed. <laughs> they, they won't surrender. Uh, but other creatures will either flee or surrender. And so it's, if you can just really show them that you mean business, usually that's enough. You know, I still got a warrior there that's alive and kicking. I'd really like to put him to sleep. There we go. Okay. Now this should be easy enough. You can see why I wanted to have two uh, mages. Okay. They make it a lot easier. You're just gonna otherwise it's just you miss, miss, miss. I mean you just never ever hit. It's just unless they're sleeping, you're gonna miss them. I mean that's otherwise you have to get very lucky. If they got any kind of AC, and you can see these guys have a AC of four. Hope I don't lose any more characters. God ugh. Everybody is asleep with that now they're all awake again. Okay, that's... Okay, finally, Lorenzo hit something. Of course they hit him as well. Of course they do. Of course. <laughs> Let's see, I don't want to use him to bandage. I really need to knock some more of these hobgoblins out. Good job. I'll let him do the bandaging. Shadow Tiger is bandaged. And there we go. Whew! So, I mean, this is like literally the second fight of the game, and if I hadn't used like sleep, three sleeps, and been really strategic, <laughs> and gotten frankly lucky, we would just all be dead. I mean, this game does not play around. And this is a pretty good party, too. But you see, all it takes is a couple bad rolls, and your characters are down, and you can bandage them, but they're out of the, they're out of the fight. There's 219 XP. And I think we get some decent... Yeah, here we go. So, lots of items here. Most of this will not be worth much. But we kind of need all the money we can get for now. So, I'd just say take. The shields are worthless, but the broadswords <coughs> are worth a little bit. And the uh, scale mail is better, actually, than the, than the ring mail. So, that'll be an upgrade. Just grabbing all that. You don't have to do this for, during the whole game. But to start with, you probably want all the money, all the stuff you could possibly sell. Taking there's a detect magic spell you could use. I'm pretty sure this is, none of this is magical. But just to show you, you know, I could cast detect magic there. And then I can, uh, when I go to take, if any of that stuff was magical, it would have a star by it. So it's a pretty good spell to have handy. Okay, we're not going to worry about the rest of that treasure. And unfortunately, we just got to run right back out. Because <laughs> we want to go back to town, rest up, and uh, improve our gear. Yeah, she gets her tithe. Okay, so now we can... Let's see, go to these characters. So Lorenzo has AC5 right now, but if we take off the ring mail and put on the scale mail... Now he's down to four, which is sound, doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a pretty big deal. Now this is what's interesting to me. So you notice it says Thaco 18, damage 1d8 plus three. That's with a longsword, right? So if I put the broadsword on instead, now it says I get 2d4. Thaco's the same, but I, the damage is 2d4 plus three. So instead of 1d8, 2d4. Now the way, if I understand that, 
<laughs> Basically, what we're talking about is I'm going to be rolling like two four-sided die. So the lowest I could get would be a two, right? So I could roll, I could still get an eight if I rolled two fours, but if I rolled two ones, the crummiest roll possible, I'd still do two damage. Uh, the long story, though, you just you could just roll a one and just be doing one point. So to me, that makes, if I'm doing that right, <laughs> the broadsword is better than the longsword. However, I don't know if this game takes into consideration like the, you know, when I look at the manual here, there's nothing about, uh, or the journal. It doesn't say anything here about these, these swords being like slashing, edged weapons, nothing like that. And if we go to the monsters, somewhere in here there's monsters. Or maybe that's in the clue book. Let's see. Somewhere they talk about monsters. I just wanted to see if they... Uh, if they mentioned anything about... Weapons, some weapons working better. Let's see. Skeleton. Uh, only crushing weapons like maces and flails do full damage against them. Swords and arrows do half damage. So... I'm not sure if the, what I'm wondering is like, if, is a long sword better in certain situations than a broad sword? Does it do different, sometimes a broad sword is like slashing damage <laughs> versus piercing or some such. <laughs> I don't know if it goes quite, if there's that much detail here. You can do it for role playing purposes, obviously. Okay. So let's put everybody into that better armor. Let's see, we need to probably go ahead and sell some of this stuff. And I notice sometimes the prices are different too. I don't know if that's charisma based or what, what's going on there. This is worth a lot. You know, sometimes you do this and they only want to give you like five gold. Six gold, six gold, okay. And let's trade this is a little bit cumbersome but what you do you view items trade and you trade who you want to give it to and then you have to say select so I want to do that with that one too to Winkler now, I don't know if I necessarily want to lose that backstab but you know I guess what you could do would be a little bit cheesy but I guess you could take off the armored backstab and then put it back on <laughs> That's kind of destroying my suspension of disbelief at that point. So I probably wouldn't do that. But I guess, you know, you could if you really wanted to. Okay, what is he wearing? Now? He's got the, he's got the scale mail. Before I sell any scale mail, I just want to make sure everybody that could possibly wear it at least has it. Okay, then we can sell that ring mail. Okay, looking good, looking good, good, good. Armor class at two. Lorenzo's still horrible. Let's just do a little experiment. <clears throat> okay, so with the leather armor, he's got a four. He puts on scale mail. He's down to two, but he loses the ability to backstab. So is that trade-off worth it? Yeah, you, don't, you probably won't be doing that much backstabbing. So I'm just going to fudge it a little bit. I'll keep that handy just in case I ever want to do that. If I don't end up ever backstabbing, you know, obviously that would be a good trade, but it's really cool. I mean, it's one of my favorite things is to line up that backstab and see that double damage. I mean, that is a pretty sweet feeling. <laughs> I hate to sacrifice that just for a little bit of extra safety. And then I think that's about it, right? We gotta sell the rest of that stuff. Winkler Aiden the Mages. Yeah, she's got her plate mail. So not a bad day's work. You know, we're getting plenty of gold. See, like when she tries to sell a broadsword, it says zero. So what I can do, I can give it to Lorenzo. But you see at this point it's getting really cumbersome. You know, you definitely wouldn't want to do that every time. But let's just see if he can get a better deal on it. His charisma is 12. Yeah, see, it gives, it gives him more. 
So I don't know, is it just because she's a knight? Something to do with... Nope. Zero. Is there something funky <laughs> funky about some of these broadswords? <laughs> That's weird. I don't know why some of these are not worth anything. It just seems kind of random. I guess if I ID'd them, I might find out. That actually is quite expensive. Okay, I think that's it. Yep, yeah, I think that's it for now. And let's go back to the Commandant. Locate Caramon at Throttle. Where do you wish to go? Alright, well, we want to go back, rest up. We want to go back to Throttle and continue our adventure. I don't think the rest of the battles... It'll be a while before we get into that tough of a battle again. Random encounters, some of those can be tough, but nothing like that. And hopefully we'll be leveled up soon. And hopefully I can actually use my spells. Yeah, do the cure light. Why is it? Oh, charm person. You know, if you know there's a battle, the problem is there's not really a good way to know there's going to be a big upcoming battle unless you've saved it before that spot or you're looking at the clue book and you know what's coming. Uh, so that's, I'm not really enjoying that part of it. I guess if you're about to go through a door, that's usually when you get attacked, so you could just do it as a, as a precaution if you didn't want to use a, uh, a hint site, basically. Okay, yeah, the sleep. You just can't have enough sleep spells at this stage of the game. And then we got Winkler here. Oh, I want to uh, change those spells. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I want to do a detect magic and then a cure light wounds. Okay. So you can see why they had that little cheat in this uh, gold box companion where you can just instantly do this. All right, everybody, I think, is back up to snuff. Go ahead and save it again. All right, and I'm gonna grab some tea, and then we'll go back to throttle. All right, let's get back to it. Do you enter? No. Now maybe we can get a little further than a couple of steps. Now one thing I noticed with this uh, gold box companion, I, you know, played this earlier to try it out, and I made some notes. And it looks like it saves the notes in between your gameplay sessions. So, you know, I don't know if that's a big deal to anybody. But I love the ability to make notes. It would be cool if it would clear this, you know, when you uh, start up a new uh, a new party. And there's, there's probably a way to do that. I just haven't really delved enough into it. Matter of fact, let me just see. Unexplore map. Okay, boom. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Now we're playing with a fresh map instead of the one that I with the other party. So that's a pretty cool feature. But like uh, the Wizardry Main of the Cosmic Forge, you remember the auto mapper I was playing with the, for that? It reminds me a lot of that. You know, you, it just fills it in for you. It's basically doing the work of the, uh, you know, the old graph paper or the clue book. You could probably even load in like the clue book. I'm, now that I mentioned that, I wonder if that's, even, if that's an option. You, know, you could always have the clue book sitting beside you somewhere in a different window. You know, if you wanted to see what was in, in the room. I kind of like exploring things on my own, though. Uh, but again, you know, it's up to you. Uh, I think this is a good compromise. And I love this uh, tactical map that pops up. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, we're up against a few hobbies, hobgoblins, I think. I wonder if this would give me any additional info. Oh, look at this. I never tried this before, but if you hover over the mob, it tells you Hobgoblin, the location, the sc whatever scores and saves are. I guess those are the stats, maybe. One attack per round, extra damage from Ranger. Dwarf has bonus to hit. Okay, I'm <laughs> not really sure why that is. <laughs> uh, let's see about putting some of these people into a comatose condition. It's a pretty easy battle, but again, it's I'm 
Let's see, that might be a leader there. You know, I find it's, it's uh, you know, better to just use the spells. You can always rest and get them back. That's a lot easier than, you know, dealing with a reload. <laughs> of course, you do get it. We're going to start getting attack now while we rest. So that is something to consider. Okay, everybody's asleep. I think I got one left that's not asleep. Should be safe enough, though. Just start knocking these guys out. Hopefully, Sarah. Let's see if Sarah can just hit a live hobgoblin. Nope, missed. Well, let's see. It did say the dwarf gets an advantage on him. Maybe he will actually hit. Nope, miss. I guarantee you, everybody's going to miss. It's just the way it goes. It's so hard to hit anything. Now, I think my... Uh, my kinder might actually do it. That's, nope, miss. <laughs> Winkler. Of course, of course, they never have that problem. They always hit, I swear. You can see why it's so important to like, use the sleep spell. Because, I mean, that one guy could take out my whole party. If I just kept getting bad rolls. And I've had it happen where it's just like four or five uh, whole turns. And just like nobody can land a blow on the son of a gun. You know, I get a little animated when that happens. Let's see, everybody, even the mages in there just trying to hit. There we go, Lorenzo got him. Good job, Lorenzo. Now we can finish these up. But you know, I don't know what that manual's talking about. It keeps saying uh, you can, or you know, the clue book is like, oh yeah, just prep before battle. You know, cast bless before battle. How will you ever get the chance? I mean, they're on you in a heartbeat. I, I don't know what they're talking about. Literally, the only chance I can think of is if you were, uh, like, about to go through a door. You know, other than that, I don't know when you'd ever have the opportunity. And you can try casting Bless in the combat, but it only works on, like, two people or three people. seems to be random. And, you know, about half the times I did it, it just would cast it on my mages who don't, <laughs> don't need the Bless. <laughs> it's kind of a pain. So that part could be handled better. Let's put all these guys on guard. I don't know if I explained this, but what guarding means is that if a mob comes up and touches them, or gets within melee range, they'll automatically get an attack. And it's very useful. Now, you might wonder too, like, why would you want to continue a battle? Well, sometimes there's battles where you might get attacked in waves. So you might say, continue on, so you can do some cure light wounds. Uh, or you just, you know, to be extra precautious just in case you, like, right away get into another battle. You know, you could basically keep extending the battle and heal everybody up that way. As long as you had some spell slots or potions or something like that. Now, here's where we get into, like, how uh, OCD are you? <laughs> you know, you could just keep getting all the stuff and going back to town and selling all the stuff. Uh, or you could decide that's just too tedious and not deal with it. Um, I'm kind of compromising a little bit here. I'll grab the the most valuable items, which are the uh, the armors. However, I've noticed that it's um, I think every time you leave the dungeon and come back, it resets all of the uh, random encounters. At least that's my theory. You know, because what I kept doing before, I kept getting the items, running back to town, and it just seemed like it was endless waves of random encounters and I think that shouldn't be that many I think it's just because it's resetting when I leave so I'm gonna try this time not to keep doing that so it might limit my items until I get really overloaded maybe uh, we'll see okay let me go ahead and rest up get that I think I still got some sleep spells left so I won't do a full rest at this point but uh, I do at least want to fix that guy Okay, let's move a little bit further into the dungeon. So remember, I'm looking for Karamon. He's rumored to be in here somewhere. Of course, I don't know where he is. See, this is a well-furnished study. So when you're in a room like this, you can try to search. You can turn search mo mode on like that, or you can just look each step. If you turn search mo mode on, you're basically taking 10 minutes per step. So that means you're much more likely to get a random encounter but also more likely, of course, to see something useful. 
So there's a door. I don't know what's on the other side. I guess we could save it and reload if it's too bad. Matter of fact, why don't we just for uh, just to see what happens. Let's do the let's do a bless and see how long it lasts. So that blesses everybody. It's supposed to last for six rounds, I believe. And I'm not sure how that equates to minutes. So it's that every move is a, a round apparently. So if I get into a battle right away, it'll work. Oh, perfect, perfect! <laughs> that just couldn't have worked out better. Uh, see, you bless, and then good things happen. Get attacked by rats. Zom my two favorite things: zombies and rats. Man. They just pour into the corridor. Yes, we are going to attack. And this is the probably the thing about Champions of Krim that makes it absolutely superior to Pool Radiance in those Forgotten Realms games is that we actually have giant rats! <laughs> Somehow uh, they screwed up and didn't put rats in uh, those other games. So they made up for that here. Looks like we've got some zombies too. The rats would be pretty easy to take out. They're only, uh, they got an AC of 7 and 2 hit points. So basically if you hit them, you kill them. But there's also some zombies in the mix, and they might have some powers. Actually, I guess we could scroll over this and see what they do. Let's see, one attack per round, undead, immune to cold, magic resistance 0. Not a whole lot of info there, but, uh, you know, I know that they're undead, so they won't be, like, you can't use a, a turn on, or a, yeah, you can use turn undead, obviously, but not a charm. Oh, well, let's just try to pop one of these uh, rats. Do the one further, further back. Boom! And Winkler, you have killed the first rat. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put some of these rats to sleep. I'll be able to grab a nice little grouping of them here. Yeah, and even though they're relatively easy to kill, you know, my character's you know, sitting here like 10 hit points. So it wouldn't take very many hits. And of course, the monsters seem to have much better. Matter of fact, can I check that? Yeah, so the rat, or the, let's see, the, the rat has a Thacko of 21. And my guys have like Thacko's of 19. So in theory, I should be able to hit them better than they can hit me. <laughs> it certainly doesn't seem that way in practice. Okay, let's go ahead and move him. And since these are really low level critters, he can uh, attack multiple opponents. I haven't figured out if he can do that unlimited times or, or what the deal is. I think you have to kill one and if you kill it then you can attack the other one. And if you kill that one you get to attack another one. Now, I don't know if that just goes on forever or if there are uh, you know limitations to it. I'll go ahead and sneak him in just so he can, uh, you know, maybe get a thwack in. I don't want to use any more of my spells right this second. You also have a uh, auto option if you don't want to do this manually every time, but it's typically not as strategic as you would be. So unless you're just really feeling confident, you, you should probably just do it manually. But it's pretty cool, you know, that they have that option. All right, let's see if we can get Sarah in there a little bit. Carrier. I guess she doesn't get the sweep command. And let's just keep him doing his thing. Oh, missed. Sarah's just knocking him out. I love the little animation. D Fortes looks like he's already ready to die again. He's he's getting a little bit low. Okay, the sleep will not work on those guys. And I don't want to get too close to them, so I think it's time to switch to darts. Let's see if we can take out this guy down. You know, actually I might want to... I'm tempted to keep some of the rats up. That's sort of just to block the zombies, but I'm... You know, I know that the... That sleep spell doesn't last very long. So you kind of want to kill them as quick as you can before they pop out. And you see those these darts are just really limited range. I might try to get in there with a turn undead on uh, you know my kinder I think has turn undead right? He's the one that's got the souped up turn undead. 
So I might see about getting him in there and see what he could do. Lorenzo's really kicking the butt. Boom, boom. Oh, these zombies, man, they keep going right for Deforte and they hit him every freaking time. See, he's down already. That just really stinks. All right, let's try the turn undead. He's supposed to have a souped up turn undead. Let's see if it works. Zombie is turned. Oh, it looks like they're just disappearing. Oh, I thought they ran away from me. I guess now they just die. Is that true? They just blinked away? Well, if that's the case, this will really be sweet. <laughs> I take back everything I said about that kinder. Well, check that out. Now, do I get to keep the... Do I get the XP? 18 experience points. I don't know if that, like, means I don't get the XP for the zombies. I mean, that seemed like a pretty low level of uh, XP, but uh, that's still pretty neat, I guess. So, yeah, we'll need to fix up. Uh, that's another good reason to have those two clerics. If you only have one cleric... You can't do the fix if that character is a... You know, if your cleric is unconscious, then you're kind of screwed. And it takes a very long time uh, to get back up to snuff. Well, okay. So that was easy enough. And I think we should probably try to get some spells back. Let's see. I'll do the, the bless again there. And let's see. Winkler, he's good. Aiden is good. Shadow Tiger has used up his spells, and I think it was a sleep and a magic missile. So we can try to rest. It's four hours, you know, just sitting here. We might get attacked. Nope, we're good. Excellent. Hey. Do not quit. All right. Well, there we go. First rat battle. Hell yeah. There's another door. You know, I'm gonna just only being able to move six steps is, makes the bless really tricky to get that right. You know, I really wish it had more range. But other than like just loading and reloading, I don't know how you would uh, be able to judge that very well. Let's just explore out here first. Okay, nothing else there. Let's go. I guess we'll go through this door. Okay, so I could bash and pick it. I think that's probably a good. Maybe that's a good indication that I should prep up a little bit first. I wonder how long protection from evil lasts. So we get six steps of blessed movement. And we can pick it. Oops. Let's see. Winkler. Move. Oh, I guess he failed to pick. Bash. The room is filled with old coffins. This room is filled with old coffins. Okay. Monsters attack! It's the rats again. My bless is worn off already. Yeah, so we're going to get into lots of little battles like this, and I'll probably skip ahead, you know, once I've shown a few of them, because they tend to be very, pretty much the same thing over and over again. Um, these little caterpillar guys, though. You really have to watch them because they, you know, they have a poison attack and apparently, I don't know what the deal is with that, but when I was playing this earlier and they hit it, the dwarf and just killed him, outright killed him and I had to restart the whole game. <laughs> so I, I guess uh, even though the dwarves are supposed to be resistant to poison and all that, sometimes they just get really, really lucky with that. So it's really something you might want to prioritize the caterpillars. You know, you don't want to get halfway through a battle and then just die. Yeah, the giant centipede. And that's, you know, the again, you're supposed to be resistant to poison, so I imagine it's even more likely to kill your, uh, you know, weaker characters. Let me see, maybe I can just get lucky. Their AC is nine. I mean, it's basically hard, should be hard to miss them. So I even got him with a dart. So it might not be that bad. 
but you want to kill them first, I think. Go ahead and just delay his turn. And the hoop pack. Yeah, shouldn't be too hard to hit them and just get them out of there. And the rats will be a little bit less of a problem. Sweep, sweeping the floor with the rats. Chris de Forte as a cleric doesn't have that sweep ability. And it looks like Sarah doesn't have it either. I guess knights don't get it until later, maybe, or maybe they never get it. Might be something unique to uh, the rangers and fighters. Okay, he seems to be getting a lot of turns. Go ahead and knock out that caterpillar. I think I'll switch him back to quarter staff after this just to conserve my ammo. The hoop pack doesn't use ammo, which is neat. Yeah, it'd be nice if uh, Sarah also had the had that sweep. I don't know what the some of the stuff is just not spelled out quite as much as I would like. Like you know, you notice he got like two attacks with those darts. That's something else. I haven't been able to figure that out. Why do they sometimes get multiple attacks with darts? Continue battle? No. There's 31 more XP. Relatively pain free. Go ahead and save it. I don't think anybody took any damage that time. Okay, we're, looks like there's a little bit more to explore to the north of here. And let's see. A cleric is opening a chest. His undead minions attack. A battle begins. So we got a... I think it said there's a cleric in this mix. Now you do not want to mess around with spellcasters because they will do a whole person spell or, or put you know something on you that makes you an easy target <clears throat> I've had that happen and so I'm gonna use my sleep spell even though I know it's not gonna work on these skeletons I think it's worth it just to uh, take that cleric out because I really don't want that cleric to get a shot if I can possibly help it I think it, yeah it's even worth oh crap Oh, I moved into the range of that skeleton there. Let me just delay. And, you know, I'm tempted to try Winkler. See if he can turn undead. I'm not sure if that means I don't get XP. It's the only thing that worries me about using this too much. But It's pretty cool that they go away. You know, you really want to have every opportunity to get XP. Down. Alright, he's good. Well, I got 488 XP. Now really the only time you want to be going back to town again is if you got uh, enough points to level. Because that store is worthless. We pretty much got everything we can get from there except for arrows and darts and things. Okay, let's see. This might be a good opportunity to use our Detect Magic. Okay, let's see. Take. Aha! See, there's where it proves its use. You see there's a, a Magic Shield. Of course, those are magical. Let's go ahead and take those. And the Shield and some Chain Mail. Let's see. who DeForte keeps getting hit, but this guy's got the worst... Uh, AC, so I'll go ahead and give him the, so let's see, his AC now is 4. So let's take, now it could be a cursed item. We haven't ID'd it, we just know it's magical. So if I put the chainmail on, that's better than the scale, so that brings it down to 3. And then if we put the magic shield on, it brings it down to 2. So he should be a lot healthier now. <laughs> With that set up, we, can, we could ID that shield at some point. Okay. So, that should, is there anything else there? Nothing really worth taking. This looks like a safe place to rest. So here's our safe 
resting spot. Even better. So we can fix up that guy. And let's save it because I... Oh, this garbage. I hate this. You know, they really just got paranoid about copy protection in this game. And it feels like every other... I guess it's a random chance every time you save you have to go to the manual and find this password. Again, just really annoying. I always hated these. It does a lot more to just annoy the uh, legitimate, you know, people than it does uh, to prevent the pirates. I don't know if GOG, this GOG version might have just nullified this. I'm not sure. But just to be on the safe side, let's see. Page, what is word number seven? What, what am I looking at here? Journal entry passwords. Let's see. Seven, word seven. Entry. What does that mean? Entry one, two, three. I can't even make out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> what the hell that was. All right, word number seven. After the heading before you play. Rule book page one. So it should be your, right? Seven. Word number seven. Page number one. Your. Okay. Okay, now we can save it. Yeah, do we use any magic? I guess he used his detect magic. Oh no, bless. Okay. And then somebody had a. Uh, yeah, detect magic. There we go. Now, the deal with those scrolls. I can't scribe them. Only mages can scribe things. But if I look at them in the inventory and I ready it and try to use it then it'll tell me what it is so I can see it's neutralized poison so I guess that could be useful if I need to unpoison somebody but again the problem is at least when my dwarf got poisoned he was just dead instantly there was absolutely no chance to do anything before he was gone okay then we just rest It was absolute. All right, let's get back to it. So I found me a nice little safe area. And again, if I wanted to, how do I close this little guy out? I could make an additional note. So it's just as simple as making a pin, giving it a number, popping it in, you're good to go. It's a very great tool. Gold box companion. So let's just keep on exploring a little bit. Some more monsters attacking. And we're going to get plenty of these little battles. So again, I'll probably uh, do a couple more than, you know, skip the video ahead just so we don't just. Uh, oh, he's already. How does he not have any spells? Did I forget to. Uh, I must have forgotten to do Aiden's uh, spells. Okay, that. A little bit inconvenient, but it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and outfit him with his quarterstaff again. Let him thwack a few rats. I don't want him to miss out on all the fun. Ooh, see, seven points of damage on Sarah. I mean, you just never know with these rolls. You never know when you're just going to get <laughs> one point. <laughs> you know, when you're this low level, it's just, you know, everything... You know, a couple of bad die rolls, basically. And you're screwed. And again, I'm really worried about those giant centipedes. I'm kind of like paranoid about those now, actually. Because it's a big pain and I have to reload the game. I'm okay with the character getting knocked unconscious. You know, I can deal with that. But when they die, kind of like in Wizardry Bane of the Cosmic Forge, they lose a point of constitution permanently. And frankly, that is just so severe, you just probably don't want to accept that. It's just going to make the game that much harder. And really, I don't want to keep using my darts either, because that means I have to go back to town, and I think that resets the, the dungeon every time I do that. You know, I wish there was some way I could confirm whether the I'm losing XP for turning the undead. 
I just don't know. But I'm going to do it anyway just because it speeds things up. <laughs> That is nice. Okay, yeah, switch to the... It's easier to restore hit points and to pick up a few darts. I don't... You always wonder with these games, why can't you just run around after the battle and, like, collect your arrows and... and... Especially if you actually hit the thing, right? Couldn't you just pull the arrow out? I mean, some would be damaged, sure, but... Thought... Surely they can't all be beyond repair. So only 18 XP. I guess I could check that out, maybe find a walkthrough or something that would let me know the answer to that. Who was it? Aiden didn't have any spells? Eh, why does Aiden only have one spell? Something happened to Aiden? Well, that doesn't sound right. Let's what's going on with Aiden? Uh, just no spell effects. He's got one spell to memorize. Four hours. Huh, I don't know what the deal was there. Uh. So he's only got two spells in memory. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I forgot all about these moons. Yeah, so you got this business with these moons up here. And if the moon is waxing and waning, it can actually take some spells away. So if it's the moon is full, like the red is full, I think that means my neutral guy here, Shadow Tiger. Yeah, he should, he's gets like an extra spell to memorize. And my positive or my good character gets one fewer spell because their moon is not full. And I completely forgot about that mechanic until now. So there's that being represented. You know, so many mechanics like that, you're like, yeah, I guess that's probably truer to the to the story, but I, does it make it more fun? You know, does anybody look at that and say, wow, that, that game would have sucked if they didn't put that thing with the moons in there, so you couldn't cast a spell. <laughs> you lost one of your spells ever so often. <laughs> it's not like it's realistic anyway. <clears throat> Monsters attack! Oh, this, this could be... This is See, this is... You know, just a random encounter, but it's very nasty because we got draconians who could take my weapons, and we got these warriors who we who we seen just like basically one shot people. So that is really alarming. I can use my my Kinder's yell ability to try to taunt some of them. Supposedly that makes them uh, easier to hit. I've never seen it working. Maybe we could confirm it now. And yeah, let's see if this tells us anything. So they're AC. If I hover over them, it says he's taunted. Uh, one attack per round, Thacko, AC 3, Thacko 18. So if that has an effect, this one's not taunted. AC 3, Thacko 18. AC3 Thacko 18. So if it makes a difference, it's not represented anywhere that I can see. All right, Lorenzo. So if I, I could attack that one in front of me, but the problem is it could take my weapon if I hit it, or if it dies. Okay, we're definitely going to want to use sleep spells. And let's see, probably the cast it here. That would get most of them, I think. Those draconians are a little bit resistant. Yeah, see, he's unaffected, unaffected. So I only got one out of that. Wow. Does he have anything useful here? You know, we could try this charm person spell. You know, supposedly that works sometimes. <laughs> unaffected. I've yet to make it work. Let's try the sleep. Okay, let's try there. I need to knock more than just one of them out. Oh, oh this is going to get bloody. I just did not knock enough of them out to... Oh, the 
missing. They always miss. Just drives you insane. Uh, that, none of this is going to be useful. Let's go ahead and try to see if I can knock one of these. These draconians, if you hit them with a ranged attack, it's much better. I need a magic missile. I'm going to have to go back and rest after this battle anyway. Oh, so he even resisted magic missile. Wow. Okay, actually hit for once. <laughs> I missed again. This is why that blast would be so useful, but I just, how do you ever know when you're going to get into a battle? Okay, I'm just going to keep casting these sleep spells and hope that I get one to connect. Unaffected, unaffected, so that is just not going to save me this time. Miss, miss, at least they're missing occasionally. And I definitely want to get rid of these warriors before they come alive. Or wake up. Let me switch him back to... You probably don't want to get him in melee range of these warriors because they will just tear him up. He's got to move a little bit closer because he can't throw <laughs> but a few feet. <laughs> One's down. Let's switch him to darts as well. well. You know, I'm glad they don't penalize you for s switching weapons. I guess everybody else is alive. Or wait, awake. I'm trying to keep an eye on my hit points. DeForte only has the 10 to begin with. Oh, man. Miss, miss, miss. <laughs> Oh, that was ugly, 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 ugly. Uh, I'm probably going to want to move in and start casting some heal spells. Um, I'll go ahead and get one queued up here. Takes it a while to kick in. Now, I think the only thing I've hit him with so far is a dart. Oh, almost dead. Okay, let's see. Lorenzo and Sarah, I guess Lorenzo could use it the most. Oh, I guess you have to, yeah, you have to be within touch range. So it have to be Sarah. That healed her up a couple of points. <laughs> miss, miss, I swear to God. Okay, five points, it's down, and he didn't lose his weapon, so that's cool. Lorenzo's gonna die. He's down to one one hit point now. Uh, that is just not good. And I can't really move over there to help him either. I'm gonna have to risk it. Oh, six points of damage just from moving. Now he can't cast. That just all around bad. And then he missed on top of that. Oh, there's going to be some... He's going down. He's down. You know, he kind of deserved to go down, too. He just would not hit anything. Now they're coming after Winkler. And everybody missing, missing. Two points. He's down to one. He's, he's going to die. I could try to cast a heal on himself, maybe. That only healed him for one hit point. I mean, absolutely worthless. I'm going to try another sleep spell. I'm pretty much out of other options. If I can't at least make some of these go to sleep, we're done here. Maybe That's probably going to hit her if I do it there. I'll try to do it here. Got one of the warriors. Maybe if I kill enough of them, they'll surrender. Okay, that wasn't a totally bad round. I do have a magic missile here. Let's try to go for five points. Uh, should I, I guess I'm not even going to bother trying to... What? Missed. I need to bandage my... Oh, I guess he doesn't need to be bandaged. Okay. Oh, good. 
<laughs> nice job with those darts, Satan. Well, at least I can count on you. There's five. Man, it's just a random encounter, but look how hard it is. You know, Aiden with the darts! Holy hell! Like the only one that could hit anything. Okay. I didn't get my back attack there for some reason. So now it, he should be able to do a back stab if I can do it right. Oh, he flees in panic. Oh, good. Now I get the behind attacks. Good. 229 XP. It was brutal, though. Very brutal. I don't think I got a whole lot of room left for items either. I'll go ahead and take the, again take the ring mails. And I'm not gonna bother with the uh, broadswords. Take. Okay. Well, now I gotta get back to that <laughs> room again. <laughs> Rest up. Just getting the hell beaten out of me. Well, let's see. I wanna make sure everybody's got magic. Uh, specials. I cure like wounds. That was really disappointing, man. That was just. It should have done more than one point. Starting to wonder if it's even worth taking it. You know, I think what what happened before when it said, "Do you want to memorize these spells?" I didn't have it selected right. Like here, it defaults to no, so you have to say yes. Okay, sleep, sleep. I just haven't found anything more useful than sleep at this point. Okay, everybody's back up again <laughs> to that one random encounter. <laughs> you know, sometimes you play this and you just can't get, yeah, you know, like I'm already getting attacked again. And for all I know, this is going to send me back into a coma. Okay, what do we got here? A couple of skeletons. I could turn undead, maybe and get rid of those skeletons. Nothing happened. Oh, he's not. That's right. It's my kinder that can do it well. Okay. Wasted one round, basically. Boom. Okay, got a couple of warriors up there. Let's try this one. Get some of these rats too. Giant rat. Yes, I'm Mike Lindell, the sleep spell guy. I'm gonna guarantee you the best sleep of your lives, man. You'll never wake up from it. It's so good. <laughs> okay. I think that should be. Yeah, can sweep them. Boom! Should sweep. Boom! Oh, he only gets two sweeps, I guess. I will take it though. Switch back to quarter staff. You know that's got to be satisfying. I'm just gonna let this guy uh, just sit there. So I think we're gonna need him to finish this up. Yeah, the hoop pack is, is just a great all-around weapon. You know, it's, I think it's, there's a weapon called a staff sling, and I haven't really used that, but the nice thing about this hoop pack is, you know, it's ranged, but it's also melee, so you don't have to keep switching back and forth, which that does get old. See, there's quite a bit of, like, messing with the interface here. I know they tried their best to make this Seamless, but a lot of clicking around, getting in the menus. There's not very many good, like, default things where you just hit return. Like, a, okay, 
54 XP and De Forte is ready to be leveled again. You know, it might be getting time to go back. I think I'll wait until at least a couple of characters are ready to level. Let's see, exit. Well, nobody took any damage. I did use some spells, but I think I'll be okay for at least one more encounter. Let's see if we can make it down this hallway. Jesus. All right. So far, so good. Here's a door. A man gibbering with fear stumbles into view. He cries out in anguish. Caramon, where are you? Look out above you. It's a trap. We record the rest of his speech as journal entry 38. So we can take a peek there. Journal entry 38. <clears throat> They're back! Back there! Who? Look out! No, 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 no! I stabbed one, but it took my sword! I couldn't get it out of its body! Caramon! His eyes clear for a moment and becomes more lucid. Listen to me, he says. They've captured Caramon. Most of our party has been wiped out. He suddenly jerks about. What's that? Get them! They've got Caramon! Find him! I'll find him! I'll find him! North, north and west and south. Traps. Back up. Go back now. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Look out above you. Oh no. He gets a slightly mad conspiratorial look on his face. I saw a money chest in a room to the east. I'm going to get it and I'm set. He looks around and leans towards you. You want to help? Huh? What do you say? The terrorized look comes back. He screams and gasps in terror. Right. Safe. <laughs> so he said there's a money chest to the east, but it kind of seemed like there was something fishy about that. You know, is that a door? Oh yeah, there's a door. Okay, so that goes back to town. Let's explore a little bit more before we do that. A hobgoblin, a hobgoblin grouse. What? More of them? I thought the plan was a secret. What do you do? Attack, leave, or parlay? So we haven't got much chance to use this parlay yet, but uh, you know, if you have a character with enough charisma, I don't remember off the top of my head who has a high charisma. But sometimes you can get out of combat. Uh, let's see. Um, you know, just to show you what this does. If I try to bless, <clears throat> you know, you can target somebody, but it just seems to be random who it affects. See, like he didn't do my target, blessed my mage, blessed himself, and that's it. <laughs> so, totally ineffective, really, try to use it in combat. Much better if you can use it before combat. Okay, got one last sleep spell left. It's always good to use it when you get a good, good grouping like this. You should knock most of them out. Nice. Even nicer. So yeah, that spell is incredibly useful. Let's see, do I have I got one more, but I think I'll save that for when I really actually uh, need it. And I probably shouldn't move him into this area, but how do you miss? Oh, I thought it was. Uh, I messed that up. Oh well. I guess that one's not asleep. <laughs> So Sarah is down to four hit points. Good grief. I could try to heal her. But this guy's heal just sucks so bad. I don't even think it's worth messing with. I'll use my other cleric maybe to heal him. Yeah, they, they've only got four hit points. If you could just land a blow, basically, they're done. But you know, That, of course, is easier said than done in this game. 
Yeah, so that did a lot better. So remember, I, he's got the god that uh, gives you a bonus to your healing. I think you get an extra die roll or something like that. So that, instead of just healing her one point, I think it did three points. <laughs> it went by a little too fast for me to see, but definitely better than just the one. Okay. I think if you move, they can't cast a spell anymore. I think I'm remembering that right. Keep knocking them out. Oh, four points of damage. That one up there is a hobgoblin leader. I think they get a little bit better AC. Okay, hobgoblin leader. And then Lorenzo hits, he hits. You know, if you get behind him like that, I think you get a better chance of hit. Okay. Trying to knock out the helpless ones while I can. I guess I could scroll over and see how long they're going to be. So he's got seven rounds. I guess that's seven rounds. Seven turns. So that's, you know, better than I thought. For some reason I was thinking you really had to move quickly on those guys. But seven rounds, surely. <laughs> surely I'll have this wrapped up before then. <laughs> surely. Okay, I'm not going to move him over there, though. That's just too, too dangerous. Seven points of damage. Wow. Just can't hit the son of a gun. He's only got three points, but I just cannot hit him. Uh, there. <laughs> My mage can hit him with a stick. Can we do this? We got these guys. Sarah's, for some reason, she just took a lot of damage this, this battle. Get him down there. Can't go there. Oh yeah, he doesn't. The heavier your armor, the less you can move. Right, I think we're done. 56 XP, some more junk. I'm pretty sure everybody that has overloaded. Yeah, I need to, I'm really getting, I'm really starting to need to go back to town now. So I'm running out of room. My party's just completely overloaded. I would like to get at least a little bit more XP before I do so. No, 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 no. Okay, we need to... You know what, though? This is kind of a good spot. To... I'm right here by the door. Let's just go back and sell up. I do think that will reset all the encounters, but... We need to... Uh... Level up to Forte. Level 2 Cleric. That should give him some new spells. Alright, now we can go to the Armory and sell all this junk. Uh, there we go. So, Alright. Getting pretty good prices this time. I don't know if it's random or what, but sometimes you get like four gold instead of the fifteen. Items twenty. You got to be careful too. If you ever see an item that's, you know, suddenly it's, uh, you know, a hundred gold or something like that, you want to say, "Whoa, that might be magical." Should I get that ID'd? Yeah, see, this is this ring mill is only worth five, and I don't know if it's just a, a luck roll or what. What the deal is? I'll just go ahead and sell it because I don't want to mess with it. But you know, he's still wearing scale mail. I thought I'd picked up some more chain mail. 
Ooh, I thought I had some extra chain mail. I need to double check that. I know that's a healing potion, but it costs a hundred gold if you want to know for sure. I don't have identify. There's a spell you can get later, but I don't have it yet. Okay, and then we've got Shadow Tiger here. You can see how this would get boring if you wanted if you did this every time. But to start off with, it's a good way to get a lot of gold. Okay, I think that's is that everybody. You know, I thought I might have an extra set of chain mail here somewhere, but maybe not. He's got chain mail. I need to keep an eye out for more chain mail. All right, so we can pool our gold, share the gold, and it should say now how much gold he's got. 134. So we're doing pretty good. So we got, you know, I guess 600 over, well over 600 gold at this point. Shouldn't be that big of a deal to buy some more darts for our mages. Just keep going until it says it can't. They're overloaded. Okay. Same for him. Yeah, see, there's that staff sling. I would get it, but it's just my... My cleric is just so, it's so unusual for him to be not in a melee range anyway. Can you join that? So 75 darts, that ought to last a little while. And uh, that's probably enough. Let's go to the end. up oh, and remember to DeForte leveled up so he should get some new spells I'll do cure light wounds kind of hard to go wrong with that one let's see Winkler gets a spell Aiden gets a spell do a sleep and shadow tech All right, rest up. Save, don't quit. <laughs> now we're done. Okay, we can good at the bar again, but what the I want to get back to rescue and Karama. All right, let's try going this way. There's a door. I think this is kind of weird. A little room all... Voices echo nearby. Mirtani's plan is about to... What do you do? Eavesdrop, attack, or leave? Eavesdrop. Eggs in the temple. Death Knight. Conversion. Ambush. You are discovered. Right, so these enemies are a long ways away. Look at that. Oh, oh, sorry. Aim manual. <laughs> oh, quite a passel of them, though. So this would be a good chance maybe to hit some of them with uh, ranged weapons. So here's what we can do. Let's uh, delay everybody. Let them get a little closer, and then we can... Uh, Wow, they can move a long ways. So he's already in attack mode, seven points. I guess we might as well move her. Ten points. See, she lost her weapon that time, so I'm going to have to use my backup weapons. Four points. Uh, 
Uh, I do want to use some spells, but I think I want to wait until they're a little bit... a little bit closer and clumped up. Oh, I can't hit anything from here. And maybe put him there. Guarding. I guess I'll just have to quit these guys for now. Okay, so if I run up there, he'll get an attack on me, and I don't want that. So I still think the best thing is probably to move here. And let's do the guard. He should be able to hit. Nope, still. Let's go ahead and delay him. I think I'll delay him. Yeah, let's just delay everybody. I want these guys to get in closer. Boom, six points. It's really good if you can flank them. I think you get a bonus to your, your hit that way. Like here, I think if I move him, I'm going to get attacked, but I think it might be worth it to get into this nice flanked position. Okay. Oh, didn't see that guy down there. Now we should be able to cast a sleep and have it count for something. Right there, looks like a perfect spot. I'm Goblin Leader. I got the Draconian that time. Uh, one of those guys did not go to sleep, that's too bad. I haven't run into that many spellcasters yet, but they're definitely in the game. That draconian. Okay, do I want to use another one? Probably not, because the they don't tend to work on these draconians anyway. Oh, those are hobgoblins. It might be worth casting it. Let's just see. But if it proves too much of a challenge, I can always do it. Oh, he missed. Attack from behind and still missed. Okay, can I sneak in there with that hoop? It? I missed. Yeah, at least they're missing me this time. Too far away. Man, these darts. They just do not have enough range. Man, Aiden's really good with those darts. Okay, there's a lot of mobs here. I might need to do another spell. Yeah, let's see, I'll do one more round, see if we can... Gah. Take him out! Got him! One of those. I'm pretty sure you took out that hop goblin leader with nothing but darts. <laughs> okay, he's attacking from behind, so he gets a little bit of an advantage with his hit. Yeah, believe me, you need every advantage you can. The problem is, he's about to get flanked. Oh. He's almost down. You know, might need to use a... Let's see, Mace. What is his Thacker with this thing? 19. So that's the problem. He's basically just randomly just flailing around with this thing. His Thacko is 19 too. Or her Thacko. So basically my Thacko sucks. That's why I'm missing so much. Oh, that hurt. Uh, it might be time to start dragging out the magic missiles and try to put more of them to sleep. Yeah, attack. You know you're really bad at aiming if you're hitting your own people. 
Uh, I'm gonna just try. Mm. Finally, somebody hits. Oh. Lorenzo down to 10 health. Just cannot hit. There's a waste of time bringing Winkler into this. He's okay with his uh, at range, but I think up close he just can't hit anything. This is one hit point. Oh, I got him. Good job. Oof. That was not so good. But now I think we can bring Sarah up there. Now that should be... <laughs> Ay, terrible. I'm starting to think these darts, I mean, I've probably killed more things with darts than I have anything else. Damn, DeForte is literally about to die, he's just taking so much damage. And can't hit it. Even from behind, you're missing. Let's see if I can heal myself with this spell. Oh, <laughs> <It's a> good... <laughs> okay, Jesus Christ! I'm gonna have to just use my spells. These guys are just really, really weak right now. Can't hit anything. You know, the trouble is, I can't really get in here without getting my own guys. Oh, there's really no, nowhere I can cast the spell that hit my own people. Kind of a waste, but you know I gotta do something. They're gonna kill me. I'm gonna try the yell. If that helps at all. It's worth it. Okay, so we can take that one out. one? Nope. Let's see. Can I hit him with a hoop it maybe? Yep, five points. Okay. From behind, but still missed. Oh, seven points. Lorenzo's just about out of this. Just can't hit. I'd be ashamed if I was literally depending on a mage with some darts to kill the guy because I just cannot hit. <laughs> okay, at least we can heal up. If I can get to Lorenzo before he's down. He's probably going down next turn. Yep. So Lorenzo's down. Yay! Our teammate is dying. Yes, because he would never hit! Okay, I think he can probably use his dart. Yep. Have I bandaged already? I think I did. Oh, he surrenders good. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have surrendered if I was him. He probably could have took us out. My guy's just going to miss every damn time. Take items. Some of this might possibly be magical. I'm debating whether I want to keep messing with lugging back all the spring mail and scale mail. I'll take a couple of the scale mails, I guess. Oh, money, you always want to take the money. Pull it, share it, exit. Okay, now we gotta get back to that sleep room. Whew! What? What? Where do these guys come from? 
Okay, that's a crock. <laughs> okay, that's not right. This is supposed to be a safe room. Uh, okay, that's fine. Whatever. That is a glitch, obviously. Or maybe it reset because I exited out. Shouldn't have, though. Oh, I'll just put everybody to sleep and kill them quick. I don't know. This is going to be with my guy unconscious and the other one's almost dead. Ah, of course he's just going to... Ah, you know, it's this game. <laughs> as much as I love it. <laughs> uh, you know, it just gets so irritating. Just missing every time there we go. got him you know if this was real D and D I would just take those dice that have been missing so much and just throw them away burn them <laughs> they are cursed <laughs> Get the quarter staff. Yeah, see, his that goes 19, so that's. Doesn't matter though when they're asleep. Thank God. Yes, that goes 18, so they are a little bit better with these darts than those other dudes are with their swords. <laughs> of course, they don't do much damage. Maybe that's the idea. Yeah, it's easier to hit something, but you don't do any damage. Yeah, that go 19, so any chance I can get to, uh, here's some more rings, some more scale now, scale, you know, sometimes you can tell it's magical too, if there's an unusual item or that, that doesn't fit the, uh, the list, let's see, do you want to go back and clean it, no, I don't want that stuff, Okay, I don't know why I got attacked here. It's supposed to be a safe spot to rest. But enough of that. Grab a couple of care light wounds. Yes. He's good. A couple of sleeps. And sleep. And rest. So that's why you don't want to have to leave the dungeon and come back. Because apparently when you do that, it resets everything. Even though I've, I haven't seen it do that before, so I'm just, maybe that was just a weird glitch or something. It's going to be tough to... You know, to find Karamon, because there's going to be lots of random encounters. And it's just, it basically, you know, it is fun, but it does, it is time consuming. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I think what I'll do is, um, I'll pause the video and just see if I can uh, maybe level these up, level these guys up a little bit more, and then get a little bit further along in the, in the plot line, because I don't think you want to see like hundreds of random encounters. All right, so I thought I would be clever and try to, you know, I went to this door and it said there was some mobs and it said, do you want to attack or leave? And I, I thought maybe I could leave, cast a less spell and prep that way. Uh, but when I went back, they just weren't there at all. <laughs> so literally the only way to prep for battle in this game is to, is to uh, use a, a walkthrough or clue book or something like that so you know what's in front of you and then you can prep before you step onto the square. Because uh, as far as I can tell, there's just no other way. But I just happen to know that there's some rats in here so I can prep this way. <laughs> so, so cheesy, you know. I guess they did the best they could, but that's, that's a pretty bad mechanic. Kind of makes those prep spells a lot, pretty much worthless, unless you have the, the clue book and you're playing it that way. Let's see, creatures rise out of the remains attack. So now I should be blessed... And it should be that I can actually hit a few things. <laughs> now, that's quite a few rats, though. Uh, maybe, uh, let's just see what happens here. 
All right, he can turn some of the undead. Boom. Oh, so that was quite a few skeletons. That helps. That's worth having a, you know, a neutral cleric just to be able to do that. Or a cleric of a... Who was that? Majir? Majir? Go ahead and delay that one as well. Let's see if this bless spell works. You know, if I can easily hit him, I might not want to waste a sleep spell on this. All right, so it seems to be working out pretty well. Let's see, does it tell me what the difference is? Now that they're blessed. Uh, let's see, how would I find that out? View... Thaco 18. So I guess it dropped at 1. So I got a little bit better chance of hitting, but maybe... Even that little bit of an advantage is huge. Okay, even my even hitting with the quarterstaff. Yeah, it's, it's just a it's a real shame you can't cast that bless a little better. You know, if it gave you a chance to cast it before battle more often, it'd be a hell of a lot more useful. Unless there's just something I'm totally missing, which is possible. I don't know how you could keep it on your guys if you had to cast it every six <laughs> steps. <laughs> yeah, even with it, I'm still missing quite a lot. Doo -doo -doo. Get my mage in there. <laughs> it makes a big difference, though. Look at that. I mean, these rats have a pretty low AC. But even with that, I'm pretty sure I'll get better Thacko as I level up. Yeah, so Sarah's ready to level up. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and save this. So I don't know if there's anything in this room. Activate my search. Nope. Just a little encounter. So here's the same thing, another door. Let's go ahead and save. You know, the, the problem is there's no way to load. Like you can save it, but the only way to load it would be to quit, come back, you know, and do it that way, which again is you know, a little too much pain to make it worth doing. Let's see, do I have another bless? I guess I've used up all my blesses anyway. Let's try that, what was it? Uh, protection from evil? So this is just casting on one person. I'll try that. Nothing in this room. You have found a room with nothing! Broken swords and armor indicate the remains of a battle. You recognize the heraldic device of a Salomnic knight. This is an Apparently where a battle took place. Okay, this is looking promising. <laughs> Getting uh, further and further from my safe space. Here's another random encounter. And let's see how quickly I can get this done. It looks like we got some rats, a worm. I don't want to mess with those worms though. They can make your life... Oh, and he missed. I was going to say their AC is so low, but... Or so high, you can usually pop them, but... You know, my luck. He won't be able to reach him anyway. Attack, attack, attack. He can turn the skeletons at least. Or, I guess not. <laughs> okay. I wonder if that's determined by the moon as well. I think you can only do that once per turn. Or once per battle. Yeah, you can't try it again, looks like. 
Might have to break out the old sleep spell again. Main thing I want to do is just get rid of those though. Those worms. Miss Miss Miss. You know, maybe it's realistic because they didn't have glasses back then, right? Maybe all my guys just badly need glasses. They haven't been invented yet. Oh, eight points? Are you kidding me? Zero. Can't quite bring that skeleton down. Uh, come on, finally. Okay, so let's do the old. Try to get these guys in position for the backstab. Boom! 14 points of damage with that backstab. <laughs> you don't get to pull it off very often, but when you do. Yeah, you know, they say it's it's really really useful on big monsters like dragons and stuff that are just too hard to hit otherwise. You do that backstab. No, I don't know what that guy's problem is. I don't think I'll let you backstab against a wall. Do -do -do. All right, quit, quit, quit. Miss, miss, miss. And he's down. Yep, nope. Another 27 XP. Yeah, so I'm starting to think it does not give you the XP for those skeletons. I guess maybe it does. I didn't actually turn it that time, did I? <laughs> Seemed like a low amount of XP to me. Oh, this crap again. Uh, let's see, six after the heading civilization, rule book page eight. Uh, let's see, word six. Uh, civilization six, eight should be four. Clean up these windows again. Okay, but the good news is, I think we're getting pretty close to where we need to be. Let's see. Uh, no, no, no. What happened there? Anyway. I don't know if it's... There, Winkler. You are attacked by a flight of arrows from the north. The Shadow Tiger is hit for four points of damage. Okay, fix him back up. A soldier approaches and wants to parlay. He explains his presence here and you record it as journal entry 35. Let's take a quick gander at that. I was with a party of knights and others under Karamon that came in here to explore. We really haven't found anything. Karamon's already left to report. I guess you must have missed him. Oh, one thing we did find out was that there's a treasure left over from the previous occupants of Throttle. We got word of it from a hobgoblin who was sneaking in to claim it. Before he died, he told us that it was located in the south-central area of the city. Tell you what, if, we, if you help me find the treasure, I'll split it with you. All right. Do you allow him to join your party? Okay. Now, he's not showing up in my hut up there, but maybe that's okay. So, south central area of the map. Uh, that's... Alright, oh, getting another random encounter, looks like. Oof, that looks nasty. 
don't really have anything good to cast. Uh, I definitely want to use my sleep spell now. I guess one of these is my guy. Well, I hope it knocks some of those bazes out. There's one down. Oh, only two? Oh, this is gonna be really bad. Okay, got him out at least. I think I got another. Yeah, a couple of more. Let's keep trying these. He's asleep. Unaffected, unaffected. Uh, miss, miss, miss. Seven points. Jesus. Three. Um, hmm. All right, he's completely out of spells now. There's one of them down. Got lucky on that. You know, I'm going to have to do some more. I'm going to have to use up all my magic here because this is just too many of these warriors. Right, one down. Another one down. You know, maybe this will give me enough XP I can level up. I desperately need to get another level or two. We're good now. Everybody else is sleeping. Alright, just get in there and clean it up. I don't want to attack my ally. <sighs> yes, yes. Attack ally, why not? Um, Quit. I still say you could melee with a dart. You know, somebody's coming at you, you dart them. Why not? It's not like an arrow that might break. Guarding. Quit. Well, I'll tell you, the only reason that was easy was because of those sleep spells. Alright, now i got two characters who can level up. And uh, I don't see anything there I can't live without. Unfortunately, we need to rest up. Hope I can get there. Oh, crap. You know, whatever happened to run or flee, you know, I feel like there used to be some options. Well doesn't look too bad. I really should have saved it before I came running out of there, though. I do see some warriors in that mix. And, uh, I don't think I... Do I have any sleep spells left? This could get... This could get bad. <laughs> miss, miss. Let's see if I can at least turn these skeletons. All right, one down. And yep, I don't think I've got any magic left. Uh, this might be the end of this party. Let's see. You. Those rats are easy to attack. I'm trying to get these guys out of the way so that a warrior can get out. My new friend. I'm sure he's perfectly exactly what he appears to be, right? No treachery. You know, if I could clean out a little room there. Good. Now I could sneak a guy in there and get flanking on that that one dude. Uh, aim. Okay. Good. 
good, good. This is looking better. All right, now I can sneak in there. Start getting flank attacks. Oh! Oh, he bandaged for me. That's cool. You know, these warriors are very serious enemies. Why is he going back there? Two, two. Ah, oh, man, I hate it when they hit so hard. All right, he's down. I don't want to get close to him because I know he's just going to tear out my mage. That guy's useful, isn't he? <laughs> okay, I've got him flanked. And he surrenders. Yep. Wouldn't have been so bad, but my... i got a guy unconscious now. I definitely want to help him. Take anything there? No. No, I think I took something by accident. All right, so a little bit further along. We're just about done with this dungeon. I thought I'd just wrap it up with you. And that'd probably be a pretty good stopping point, I think. Just defeated a big old battle there, and I was down to... Who will attempt a disarmament? Go, <laughs> oh, good job. Not! Apparently triggered this trap. Anyway, what I was trying to say is I just got through this massive battle and uh got some better armor uh, unfortunately though it looks like I'm pretty much out of yeah pretty much out of uh, options of this guy got some plate mail for my uh, what the hell okay my dwarf finally got some plate mail so maybe, his, his AC is lower now than it's been, so maybe that'll make a difference, we'll see. Take out these giant rats. Okay. Pretty much, I need to get back and level up, but I got all the random encounters done in this dungeon and I really don't want to have to fight it all again, so I'm just trying to get through this. I wonder why that yell didn't work. A lot of just random stuff. I could try to turn, maybe. At least get, nothing happens. Okay, it's just not his time to shine, I suppose. Or his, or anybody else. <laughs> like, like, every time I turn the recorder on, all my guys just start to suck. I think they get performance anxiety or something. And I don't know why these guys can't cast any spells. I Maybe getting hit with the rocks did something to them. Wiped their memories. I don't know what the what the deal is there. This is this could end up being kind of hairy though. I can't. I need to get this guy where he can do something, but he's kind of stuck there. It'd be nice if I could see where I'm going. All those skeletons, I could have just turned, but I guess they're pretty easy to kill anyway. Get in there and kill. They get up and kill. Don't think I want to send those guys into the mix. Now we can get strange. Oh, no, he can't get there after all. Got a little bit of a choke point there. Mm 
Mm. Also need to get some more darts. Well, this is going to be... Yeah, not... I guess I could use his bow. I haven't used his bow yet. There we go. I'd hate to have to keep shifting that around. <laughs> and he missed. <laughs> Yeah, so one circumstance. So I think that's the first time he's used that bow. Poor old Kinder just can't hit. Miss, miss, miss. He's better, I think, at range than up close. Okay, let's try that again. You know, I thought I was showing you the last bit of this dungeon, and of course it's this long <laughs> battle. <laughs> That's okay. Two. Come on, he's got like two hit points left. Nobody can hit him. really want to get done with this. Come on guys, can't you just stay still? <laughs> Let me still. I'm just trying to kill you, come on. Alright, finally, that one's down. It's going to be great when I get back to town and level all these guys up. Unfortunately, this is what a lot of this game is, is about, is just trying to land a blow after like 50 turns. Okay, he's fleeing. I know these skeletons will definitely not flee. Okay, fine, I got one down. Should be over here pretty quick. I think that there's something about you have to get outside the zone. And let's see if it what happens. If he'll be I don't know if I have to go up there and kill him or if it'll just quit automatically. Got a lot of party members right now. Yep, got away. Good. <laughs> Let's do this again. <laughs> nope. 24 experience points for all that. Good news is we don't have to worry about those damned random encounters. Okay. So this was just that area that was trapped, and I'm not sure there's really any point even coming up here. I probably could have saved myself that battle. Let's see. Strangeborn stops you. Wait, he cries. There's a trap here. He sets it off harmlessly. Okay, which way to... A cleric and draconians are rushing from the north. You hear someone was at the trap. They spot you. What do you do? I attack, of course. Even though I should go back to town and get some more gear. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I still... I forgot to... Rememorize their spells. Oh no. Okay, that. Hopefully, this battle won't be too ferocious. Man, those hoop packs have a lot of range. Must be really tough playing this game without a. without any, um. Mages. Okay, so he should be able to yell, and this is supposed to uh, 
Yeah, it's, oh, there's a freaking cleric in there. Oh, that's not good. So this is supposed to make them easier to hit. I think it makes them more likely to miss, too. There's a That cleric is going to mess with me. i got to get him out quick. Okay. Hmm, these mages are just not going to be very useful in this circumstance. Not any darts, and I do not want to get them in there taking damage. Okay, let's get... Yeah, hit that cleric. <laughs> Just go for the cleric. If he gets to cast a spell, we will suffer. Oh boy, I should have moved that guy out of the way. Hmm. Maybe I still can. Let's see. Yeah, I can move him. Uh, I can't get him out of there without... I guess I can move him back. There we go. There we go. Now... I can move him. Yeah, perfect. Keep aiming at that cleric. Oh, it must be down to like one point. Just hope he doesn't get a chance to cast. Ah! Ah, everything. Okay. Maybe Kildurf can do it. Come on, Kildurf. It's got one point left! <laughs> so Okay, he lost his weapon, but we got rid of that one. Well, the cleric didn't cast a spell. I think if they take damage, they can't cast. Is that how it works? All right, cleric's down. This ought to be pretty easy from here on out. And I say that, though, and then they start wailing on me. Oh, how did he... And D Forte is just determined to die. Let me impale myself upon your sword. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Alright, yeah, he's down to six hit points. I'm gonna get him in there and do some... Hopefully do some backstabbing. That one's down. And if I can get him like that, he's down anyway. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, I mean, the game really speeds up when you get rid of those random encounters. Anything useful? There's a mace there. Mace and a shield and some chain mail. I guess I'll go ahead and collect those items. I don't... Small chance it could be magical. Okay, let's go ahead and rest. Fix. Oh, I got interrupted. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. Okay, bunch of rats. I do not have my, uh, I don't have any, it only did one? All right, at least I got rid of a little bit of crap. Man, this is getting serious now, though. These are two warriors, and the party's banged up pretty hard. Let's see. I'm going to have to get him in there somehow. I wonder why this Kendra can't taunt. This is getting hairy. I just can't believe I keep having this bad, bad luck. God, miss, miss, miss. Oh, one down, two down. Here comes that warrior, though, and I've got no sleep spells this time. I can't even get this guy into the battle yet. That's, I guess there's nothing he can do. Probably stupid, I'm going to try to retreat. Okay, he got away. 
I can't even hit the rats. <laughs> this is just beyond pathetic. Uh, might. Got two blows on that warrior. And I created a little space there for this knight to come in there. There, maybe he can hit. Uh, there's, it looks like there's another warrior back there, too. You know, the manual, they do say that uh, a lot of these random encounters are actually far more challenging than the set pieces. Uh, I think it's just because you never know what you're going to run into, and you can just literally spend like eight attacks just trying to kill a rat. <laughs> okay, man, oh, so crappy. Okay, warrior's down. Here comes another one. Let's see. I can try to turn undead again. Nothing happens. All right, I'm going to try to cure myself. All right, he got that off. And he's back to 16. Okay. You know, you figure these rats would be easy to pick off, but I mean, you just can't hit the sons of guns. I mean, hit the warriors easier than I can these things that are supposed to be. You have a horrible AC, but. Okay. Nope. 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 <laughs> okay, back, 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 back. Let's try to hit that. I feel like I'm having more luck hitting the warrior than those. God, do you see that? Six damage. I'm gonna have to use another heal on that guy. Something about this rat here. Just is... there we go. Try to go quickly, but hmm. all I gotta do is land one blow on him. Alright, get that rat out. What did he surrender? Alright, I think he surrendered. Boom. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, that's that was a tough little fight. It's been a while since it since it wouldn't let me do my fix. I guess this must be a particularly dangerous area. I'm gonna go ahead and save it here and try to get my spells back. Definitely going to need them. Sleep spells. Sleep. I'll do one. I guess he's got his uh, his moon must be in the ascendancy phase. All right. Back up to snuff. Now let's get Caramon rescued. Okay, he's not in there. He must be in this room. Yeah, I bet you anything he's through here. A trap opens from above and evil forces drop on you. Ooh, okay, this looks fun. We got some, looks like some wizards in the mix. Let's start off with our yell. Yeah, it's working this time. I don't... I really would love to see the code. <laughs> like, I don't... Is it a random number of critters? Is it... Just not sure how that works. Oh, boy. Oh, we cast a magic missile. Oh, 
better let all of them cast before I do. Oh, Winkler dead! I guess that taunt worked a little better than he wanted. <laughs> okay, do I have my... Yeah, we better put these guys to sleep. If this doesn't work, we're going to lose this. Alright, he's asleep. Good. Sleep. Excellent. Good. <laughs> Didn't quite get them all, but that's okay. We can start carving these down. Oh, hell, whole person. I think I need to dispel magic to get rid of that. So there's one more character out of the fight. At least we got that mage out. Let's see. Okay, for whatever reason, he doesn't have anything to cast again. You know, is it glitches? I don't know what's going on with this game. I don't know. He should have a spell to cast. I Must just be some glitches. And then we the whole person. So that one's out of the battle now. And my he's out of the battle. So this is going to be extremely difficult. And they're hard as hell to hit too. Oh, he's just gonna get another spell off. Yeah, both these clerics are still in the in the fight. Yeah, got that one at least. I'm pretty sure that whole person just lasts for flipping ever too. That'll probably be the whole fight. All right, got that one for the one more cleric back there. Maybe he's out of spells. There goes two of my guys. Oh, three of my guys dying. <sighs> All right, I guess you can bandage. All right. Miss, miss, miss. Four points. I'm going to... Need everybody here fighting. Alright, good. He's down. I need to remember to put his uh, weapon back on. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, use longsword. Mage is almost down, but this could go any. Oh, Lorenzo, can't you ever dodge? Crap! Okay, Sarah, you go for that. Oh, I got him down to one hit point. Missed again. All right, got that one down. And uh, this guy's only got four health. I'm going to just save him for an absolute emergency. <laughs> just cannot hit. All right, he's okay. He's unfrozen. Okay. Thank you! Thank you! Alright, this freaking Tinder I picked up is doing better than anybody. Alright, finally. You know, it's always kind of a mixed blessing when you got these NPCs that are doing way better than the, your party members that you work so hard on. My guys just can't hit a damn thing. 
pretty much. I think if I fight, if I think if I can win this fight, though, we're done with this dungeon. At least for now, we'll have to come back and do some other stuff. Oh, there we go. All right, I'm gonna get this guy into the mix. Okay, he's fleeing, and he's dead. <laughs> Nope, do not continue the battle. Of course, Winkler's dead. He's the only one that's got the ability to detect magic. And I doubt any of this is magical. I'll just pick it up anyway. Nope. Well, I didn't... I thought that was the end. Fix. Oh, I guess I guess all my clerics are down. We've got to rest for a full day. Now we can fix. And I can get my spells back. You know, I want to know why my mages keep... Why are they not memorizing these spells? No spells memorized. Okay. Kind of mysterious. He says he's memorized it. Uh, I guess it was just either I did something wrong or it was a little glitch. Okay, let's get... We ought to be just about done with this thing. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'll pick the lock. No, it didn't work. Let's see, Winkler should be able to pick the locks. You see a chained figure to the south. Congratulations, the party gains XP. You find Caramon in chains. As you free him, he tells you of his ordeals and you record it as journal entry 73. Eh, what the hell. Let's take a quick gander at that. After the battle, I was taken to see a powerful cleric. He laughed at my defeat. They led me to some doors that glowed in the darkness, opened them with a key that he pulled from his robes, and he took me to a dark temple. I saw a bronze dragon egg on the altar. He told me they were going to start the corruptions again. Then he had his minions beat me. I woke up here. If it hadn't been, if it hadn't have been for the treachery of a dark elf and a sneak attack from behind, they never would have captured me. He pauses. I'm sorry for my men, he says. They had no idea what we're, ge we're getting into. Krenz, blood. I didn't know either. We were unprepared for the extent of the evil forces. The ambush was a complete surprise. Suddenly you hear a great crash from outside the room. A strange, high-pitched, tinkling sound is accompanied by muffled screams. A female voice calls out for Karamon. He glances up, startled at the sound. Karaman yells, and in a moment, a figure appears in the doorway. A lovely elven woman strides in the room. She embraces Karaman and explains her presence, and you record it as journal entry number nine. Back to the journal number nine. Uh, she explains to Karaman, I've been sent by Sir Carl to get you back to the outpost. There are rumors that large forces of draconians, hobgoblins, minotaurs, and others are gathered. We need you to direct scouting and raiding operations. I see now that things are worse than we thought. Throttle was supposed to have been abandoned. Kermon says it's even worse than that. I have seen brass dragon eggs. She gasps. No, they must not do this again. They must not do this again. Then she pauses. Wait, how can they do it? I thought the process was lost during the War of the Lance. Did you see any evidence that they were successful? No, says Caramon. I was knocked unconscious before I had a chance to look further. He looks. He turns to you. I need you to investigate this matter. Find the key and go to the old temple in the northeast part of the city. Find out what you can. We must get back to Sir Carl as well. Caramon will need our help. Please do as he asks. 
Claremont says, the cleric that took me has just left for his quarters in the southwest corner of Throttle. Find him and you will find the key. The key will make the doors into the temple glow. The doors are located in the two corridors that border the northeast quadrant of the city. Kerman and Maya leave. You hear a great rush of air shortly after their departure, and your companions leave. And that is that. <laughs> uh, so there we go, folks. Uh, you know, I could keep going, obviously. I want to finish the game, but uh, I think that's plenty enough, uh, you know, for you to for one video. Um, I do want, before we go though, I want to get out of here and get back to town just for the sake of a little closure. And let's see, I want to raise, how do I get out of here? I want to uh, level up. There we go. And there shouldn't be any more random encounters, but when I come back I'll probably have uh, random encounters again. But for now, we're safe. Okay, let's get back to town. Yes. Okay. Commandant. Okay, he's just telling us to obey Karaman's orders, but I want to do this. I want to train level two knight. Excellent. Lorenzo is a level three ranger. Forte, level three cleric, yay! That's a big deal when a cleric or a mage levels up. A level two cleric and a level four thief. Bam! And let's see, Aiden, level three mage. <laughs> yes. Oh, we get a new spell. Uh, what do we want to learn? Detect invisibility, stinking cloud, ray of enfeeblement. Stinking cloud. I, you know, I, I tried this out in my previous gameplay, but it was the range is so limited. It's very hard to find a really good situation to use it. And you might be better off with ray of enfeeblement. And I'll just take the cloud for now. And then we've got one more to train. Level 3 mage, yes. Uh, so you see, since he is a... Uh, uh, since he is a neutral mage, he gets a different set of spells. Like he's got burning hands up here. Invisibility, mirror image. He's also got the stinking cloud strength. I've heard that Nuck is actually critical for this game. There's some, uh, I think there's some doors you can only open with knock, so I might take that one just because I heard that. Oh, anyway, we'll stop it here. Um, you know, the Curse of the Azure, uh, fuck yeah, uh, Champions of Kren, it's, it, I think it's not on most people's, uh, you know, it's, it's, most people like Pool of Radiance the best. You know, people that have played through the whole series, they might talk about, a lot of people like, uh, the second game, Curse of the Azure Bonds, just because it's got that great story with the tattoos and everything. Um, and personally, I could, I'd probably pick one of those two as well. I'm kind of, uh, I seem to have fond memories of this series in the frontier, but <laughs> I just say, you know, going back and playing it now, uh, that was pretty brutal. I mean, lots and just way uh, heavy on the random encounters, uh, getting through that first dungeon. It's pretty uh, frustrating at times. I'm not going to lie. Uh, the gold box companion stuff really, really helps, though. And it is fun getting to see, like, Caramon again and, you know, continuing the story from those novels. I think that's the real selling point. Uh, if you love this series, if you read those the Chronicles and the Legends, and you'd love to play this and see what all happens, <laughs> it's much better done than certain other uh, Dragonlance-based video games. You know, I'll leave it at that. Um... I think really what I'm critiquing here more than anything is just the gold box companion. You know, what that adds to the gameplay experience. And I, and I think, again, I, I'll stick by what I said at the previous, uh, or at the beginning of the video. Uh, to me, it makes it feel like a different game. You know, it really adds a, uh, some really much needed updates to the interface. And if you don't mind, uh, 
using those features that are kind of borderline on a, uh, cheating, basically. <laughs> you know, you could uh, memorize your spells a lot easier and uh, basically just dispense with some of the aspects of the gameplay that people find more irritating than fun. Um, so I guess that's that's it. I mean, if you like the Dragonlance series and the Gold Box games, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> Obviously, you want to play this. If you don't really care about Dragonlance, though, you probably would be better off with the, uh, that main sort of flagship series, really, the uh, Forgotten Realms series. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do for my next video. I'm very curious about the Buck Rogers series. I haven't really played that. And I'm also curious about the Unlimited Adventures game, which basically makes the uh, Gold Box series into a sort of a roguelike experience. I've never played that. I'm very curious if it's, if, <laughs> if it's just like random encounter hell uh, or if it's actually a fun game. I don't know, honestly. So I'd love to just delve into that and try it out. Uh, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, what do you think about the uh, Kryn series? You know, do you think it holds up well? Does watching this video make you want to go back and play it, maybe with the Gold Box Companion? Uh, you'd like to do that. You know, if so, you know, let me know how it goes. And, and um, I'll just leave it here. And I'll <laughs> hope uh, you guys will enjoy this uh, video, and I'll see you next time. And that's <laughs> all for this month's episode i you know i have to apologize again guys i know it's taken me uh, a long time to get these videos out and you know all i can say is i'm you know i'm doing my best uh, i do want to thank you very very much for your support of the show for keeping these episodes coming i mean it's, it's so uh, amazing and humbling to see all the support from you guys i know that uh, you really want more videos and you know i'd be happy to provide those i uh, uh, you know, hopefully things will be slowing down here eventually at the, you know, the day job. Uh, but if you really want, you know, more Mad Chat, all I can say is you should uh, help me get the Shurgi on board. Uh, yeah, that's right. You, you know, have you ever seen a bull uh, out in the woods or in a pen and it's kind of getting upset and it's like, you know, doing this thing with his foot and it's got like slobber coming down his mouth. and It's like, you know, rubbing his horns up against a tree and it just... You know, it really looks like it's getting, uh, you know, it's ready for action. I mean, th th this bull uh, out in the pen. And, and that's really the Shurgi. Uh, I mean, he's ready <laughs> to, to, to hit the ground running here. You know, he, you know, if I just could get him on board, I mean, we could be uh, churning out probably at least twice uh, the number of episodes and doing more interviews. Just, to, you know, had to have him on the back end, basically, uh, helping set, every, set everything up and co-produce the show. Uh, so I really want to make that a reality, you know, at some point not in the not too distant future. And so basically, what I'm saying is, if you want more Matt Chat, you got to pony up a few more bucks over on the Patreon site. And uh, once we get to that sufficient level, here comes the Shurgi. We'll get him right <laughs> out of that pen. Get that bull out of that pen. I mean, he looks so upset in that pen. Uh, let's get him out of there. Uh, put him to work for Matt Chat, man. Put him to work for you guys. I think you'll uh, we'll all benefit immensely from that. Uh, anyway, uh, what about that news from the Mac game? All right, man. There's so much news, and really, you know, it's been <laughs> there's just too much to cover. So. Uh, I'll just hit three things that really caught my eye. Uh, one is this uh, One Ring, the One Ring role-playing game, second edition. Ten days left on this Kickstarter as I'm posting this now. It's a new edition of a role-playing game that's been out for a while. It's uh, by Francesco Nepotello. And I think the original, yeah, the original came out in 2011. So this new one has uh, an updated set of rules, a new setting, Lone Lands of Iriador. In the, in the year 2965 of the Third Age, to be precise. And it has a complete visual redesign of the art and graphics, offering a view of Middle Earth that is fresh and familiar at the same time. Uh, anyway, it's already raised. I mean, they were asking for 12000 bucks, and they got over $1.1 million. 
and they still got over a week left on the clock. I mean, how about that? <laughs> I mean, that's enough money where it really starts to open up some possibilities. So uh, I'm really excited for those guys, but also for the, you know, the game. You know, love to see what happens here. I haven't, you know, I'm not really familiar with it. I'm just, you know, with the tabletop world, I'm kind of limited to uh, 5e, basically, some homebrew stuff. But this one looks like it would be worth uh, checking out. So, you know, if you're familiar with it, let me know. I'd love to hear from you about what you think about the uh, 2011 game as well as this updated one. Uh, moving on, so a lot of people wrote in about this. Diablo 2 Resurrected. So they, I guess, have been promising this for a long time, a Diablo 2 makeover. And apparently it is now a uh, going to happen, or at least it's been officially announced. Let's see, Ryan Gilliam of Polygon wrote about it. He says it'll be a faithful remaster of Diablo 2 and, and its expansion, Lord of Destruction. And it'll be out on the Switch, the PS4, the PS5, of course, Windows. Well, maybe I shouldn't even say of course anymore, who knows. <laughs> but it will be out on the PC, uh, the Xbox One, the Series X, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they're promising a technical alpha, whatever the hell that is, for the PC soon. Uh, Diablo 2 will take Diablo, uh, or Diablo 2 Resurrected will take Diablo 2's 2D sprites and paints over them with fully 3D rendered models. You know, see, that's what I was hoping they were going to do with those enhanced editions of uh, <laughs> Master Chief. <laughs> that's what I was hoping they were going to do with those enhanced editions of the Baldur's Gate series and uh, Icewind Dale. I'm still hoping one day to see that. Uh, but anyway, this is Diablo 2 uh, that will be able to display up to 4K resolution, but players can also toggle back to the original nostalgic graphics by pressing a button. <laughs> you know, big whoop. Yeah, and that kind of stuff. I mean, if you want to, I don't know how I feel about that. I wouldn't even waste the time coding that in, because if you want to play the originals, just go play the originals. You know, and I don't, you know, I'm more excited about the new stuff. Now, let's say Blizzard also promises a 7.1 Dolby surround sound and 27 minutes of remastered cutscenes. So it sounds like they're really, you know, trying to do it right. Uh, so keep your eye out for that, especially if you're a Diablo 2 fan. And I mean, really, uh, who's not? <laughs> At least on some level. Uh, and there's another one just to wrap up here. There's a game called Valheim, I believe this is pronounced, or Valheim. It's a brutal exploration and survival game for one to ten players set in a procedurally generated purgatory inspired by Viking culture. So battle, build, and conquer your way to a saga worthy of Odin's patronage. Uh, so it so looks and sounds really good. I'm a huge fan of Viking stuff. I watch that show Vikings. You know, I watch the, what is it, the Lost Kingdom. Uh, I even like uh, Eric the Viking from back in the day. It's just I can't get enough Viking stuff. <laughs> I love it all. And I like the uh, survival game. You probably know I'm just a, I kind of got obsessed. I kind of got obsessed uh, uh, with Seven Days to Die because I also love zombies. <laughs> so this sounds like it's kind of trying to do for the Viking uh, setting, I suppose, what Seven Days did for that zombie world. It looks really cool, and I've heard uh, the reviews are overwhelmingly positive over, uh, over on Steam. So as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to check this out. It says you can build and sell ships. It's got a dodge and block combat system with lots of weapons. You can summon bosses of myth and legend. And my Evernote is going crazy. <laughs> uh, anyway, I won't go through it all here, uh, but it really, really sounds fantastic. And again, if you've played it and you've got some experience with it, an opinion on it, uh, please feel free to share that with me. I'd love to hear it. Okay, let's wrap it up then with a quote. And I was looking for quotes uh, from the uh, Chronicles and the Legend series from Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. And here's a quote from a book called Soul Forge, which came a little bit later than those. And, you know, I've read the Soul Forge. Uh, you know, I'll say it's probably not my favorite. <laughs> you just, you're not going to beat Chronicles, okay? Uh, but it, it's a good, decent book. But anyway, uh, the quote from it is good. And this is a quote from a character who's probably uh, one of your favorites too, called Raceland. And it goes something like this. You cannot hide from danger. Death floats on the air, creeps through the window, comes with the handshake of a stranger. If we stop living because we fear death, then we have already died. That's Raceland. You can see why he's such a cool character. <laughs> uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next time.
was thinking of the immortal words of Socrates, who said, I drank what? 